Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight, I have a very special guest, my first guest on one of these live streams. We have Mike from Mike's Book Reviews. Um, is it Mike's Book Reviews? I always want to, I always get the name of your channel slightly wrong. It, it is, it is, uh, it is plural, Mike's Book Reviews. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I get a lot of people who call it Mike's Book Review. Uh, I get mm -hmm. lots of Mike's Book E Review. Okay, I get yeah. all kinds of things like that. Wow. And I think I think you have a, a second channel, right? Like Mike's Media Reviews. Is that right? Sort of. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I haven't updated it in like three months, so sort of. That's what my second channel is like. I have a second channel just to do like book lit, like you know, book hauls or something like this. I haven't I haven't touched it in months, but mm. um, I think I sometimes get media and books mixed up because you talk about media. Some you talk you talk yeah. about TV mm. shows, you know. But anyway, um, so Mike, why don't you just introduce yourself a little bit to anyone who's joining in the stream who uh might not know you well i'm mike and i'm a leo and i enjoy long walks on the beach and books about wizards and uh talking about them on youtube okay that's a fantastic intro <laughs> no, for real, for real, uh, just uh mike i run, run a channel talking about books like everybody else it seems to does recently it used to be yeah. kind of a niche thing when i started about four years ago but i won't pretend i was one of the first ones it was this big world i had no idea that this was a thing when I started doing it and I was like, wow, there are other people like me out there. Imagine that. So uh, it was just kind of an accident. I kind of walked into doing this booktube thing and it's been kind of a happy accident because I've met lots of wonderful, wonderful people. And I'm, I'm here to learn from Jared tonight because uh, he puts out like one video and it gets like 50,000 views. That's a that's a huge hit for me. I got yeah. he's got to teach me here. I got to learn some things. Yeah. Thank you so much, Darren for the super chat that's really appreciated you know you know Mike. actually i think i think part of this i think we should talk about this but i want to first talk about how you got into youtube because mm -hmm. i think it's interesting to talk about like our different approaches to video making because mm -hmm. sure. i think like we you and i have very very different approaches to like what right. we're going to put out on a weekly basis but mm -hmm. like what made you turn the camera on the first time oh well i had already been podcasting for like a decade and uh i felt like I don't know. I wasn't really going to do the video thing because I've always been like, hey, face made for radio. Got a great voice, but, you know, I don't have the face to match. So I was just really sticking to podcasting for a long time. And then the hosting service that I used decided they were going to change some things. They were going to start charging. And I, at the time, YouTube Live, which is basically what this is now. But before they had that, it was just YouTube Live. Would actually, you could record your podcast there, rip the audio off of it. And there you've got your podcast for free. So it was it was not, it was just, there was a lot less options than for podcasting like there is now. And my co-host, we just had a, a podcast talking about, you know, book, not books, uh, basically everything, but, you know, media and things. And I just, I, he didn't read like I did. And I wanted an outlet to kind of talk about those things. So I said, I'm just going to kind of do this on the side. Mm -hmm. And I said, Hey, I've already got this stuff set up. Why not? You know, YouTube's a thing. Why not? Why not just use it? So it was a real shock to me when I started doing some videos and all of a sudden I was like, wow, why do these got like 500 views? None of my podcasts ever get that much. And I thought, oh, it's just because it's video. And then I was like, oh, it's just because it's Wheel of Time. And it's like, oh, I guess people actually like me talking about these things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it was kind of a happy accident. Like I said, I really was just an audio only kind of person. And that's why my videos still this day are very you know, fixed camera angle. I don't do a mm -hmm. lot of trickery with it, nothing like that, because that's just kind of what I came into. And you do like pretty straight when you when you're talking. Um you don't do a ton of cuts either no. right you like to I, just I, like go through i actually it. get mad at myself when i have to make a cut because you know i okay. sneeze or my kids will knock on the door or some loud motorcycle will drive by or something like that i actually get mad about it but yeah no i one of my approach to kind of feel like you were just talking to a friend at a yeah, you know, coffee yeah. house or something and i think you know years of podcasting helps you be able to fill in those spaces without having to cut or anything like that so i made sure i don't use any notes or anything like that because you'll mm -hmm. just keep looking at them if you have them. It'll yeah, kind of yeah. ruin your, your speech yeah. pattern if you keep looking at your notes. So, yeah. 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 Wow. Did, did you ever do like radio stuff by any chance? I wanted to. Uh, yeah. I had a lot of offers from local sports radio that wanted me to come in an intern, which means work for free. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like the joker on that. If you're good at something, never do it for free. And yeah, so yeah. I was like, <laughs> it's such a cutthroat business. And I was like, I have a real job. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't. That's something you do if you're, 18 you know and yeah, you're yeah, going yeah. through college and you yeah. want to try to make a career out of it and i was like no and i understand everybody's got to pay their dues to get into that industry and i was like like i said i have a i have a nine to five i'm not i'm not really looking for something like that but uh yeah they, they, they were interested obviously just i guess i guess i have a good speaking voice so they were they were interested in me coming on the radio and talking with them but then they wanted to give me like a 2 a.m spot and i said no uh, yeah 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 well well one actually i as someone who used to work I did seasonal work for UPS when I was in college. 
and I'd be getting up at 2 a.m. to go to the warehouse um, uh, to like do stuff for Christmas. So I appreciate those 2 a.m. talk radio guys because right, they're like the right. only ones that keep you awake. Well, podcasts is how you can hear them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. The only the reason I asked about the radio is because you have this way of talking in your videos where you just like naturally transition from one topic to another. And you're like, all right, enough about that going. And it, it reminds me of like a like a radio DJ or something. You have to be the master of the segue. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, yeah, like I can do that. Yeah. 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 Cool. So um, and you started by talking about Wheel of Time. Uh, with BookTube. Yeah, it was one of those things like it wasn't like I was saying, oh, I'm going to make a BookTube channel. I'm going to talk about Wheel of Time. What it was was I knew I was going to be reading Wheel of Time and I knew it was a long series. And at the time it was because the TV show was coming out. It was announced. And I said, uh, the rumor at the time was that they were going to be with two books per season. So I said, here's what my plan is. I'll just read to stay ahead of the show. So I'll just read the first two books and see how that goes. And then I realized I was going to keep going. And so I said, I'm going to forget all this stuff. So I said, what I'll do is, because I plan on taking long breaks, I'll just record like a little video diary kind of thing, almost in my podcast format, to kind of just remind myself if I go back to it. So I remember what happened in each book. I was going to put like all 14 of them together and just like release them all at once. And like a long video. And I was like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. if my computer crashes? I was like, ah, just go ahead and upload them to YouTube. You know, no one, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. all that is really, is just, I'm just using that for hosting for my podcast anyway. And then I came on like a couple of days later. I'm like, what's going on? He's got like five, 600 views and like yeah, 30 yeah. comments. What's going on? You know? So that's when I kind of realized, Oh wow, this is, this is the thing. So when you started with wheel of time, did you realize that you were starting with the pinnacle of fantasy? And that I no mean, matter what, I, I guess not. I, <laughs> I knew it had it, it had its fans because uh, me and my yeah. old roommate, he was like the only other one I knew that read read fantasy books. I'm talking about like when we were like 20, and all the time he used to try to get me to read all the time because uh, you know I got him in a song of ice and fire, and I'm still sorry about that, Nick. That's my fault. Uh, but, uh, so he was always wanting to like pay it for it. He's always telling me, "Oh, you should read all the time, read all the time." And I was like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait." So this is another series that isn't complete. I've already, you know, no, you're just trying to get me back because I got you into a yeah, little yeah, time. Yeah. And I did try Eye of the World. It just didn't really click for me right after reading, you know, the first three Song of Ice and Fire books. That's all that was out at the time. I, it yeah. wasn't it wasn't scratching the itch that I wanted. So I didn't decide to go back into it. And I told him when it was complete, I would finish it. So he started to hit me with it. Oh, it's, it's complete now by a different author. Some guy named Brandon Sanderson, who I'd never heard of at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, nah, I'll tell you what, if they ever make a movie or a tv show i'll read it and so when that happened i felt like i owed it to him to do that so yeah it's kind of funny how that happened okay yeah because because the, the wheel of time is actually my favorite fantasy series of all time it's up there for me now as well but at the time i i knew it was big but i didn't think it was yeah. as big as it is i think without a doubt it's the biggest one on book two no doubt oh yeah i think so especially because um the lord of the rings while that's probably the most famous fantasy series ever it doesn't get as much love i think it feels a little dated to some people i say this is a big fan i'm a big fan of the lord i, I think what that is is the average booktubers much younger than me and uh, you know yeah, yeah, they yeah. grew up with will of time so it's special to them and i get that i get yeah, that you know yeah. I, I i grew up reading you know the 90s and, and earlier for fantasy you know and so it was really right before wheel of time started was the stuff that i was reading like you know terry brooks and mm -hmm, yeah, going back yeah. to tolkien and, 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 and c.s lewis and stuff so i think it really is about what you grow up with and you think the average book tubers between you know 22 to 34 or so i think yeah they they probably grew up when these were each book releasing mm -hmm, and so yeah, yeah. It's, it's always going to be super special to me yeah you know i it feels weird to say that the wheel of time is fast paced but compared to the Lord of the Rings, it's fast paced, right? Right on a right. like per, on, on the on the page. So maybe it's a little bit easier, even though there's such heavy Tolkien influence mm. in, in in the in the Wheel of Time. Sometimes to its detriment, some people, um, I mean, some people would say, you know, Eye of the World is very much like kind of like the Fellowship, or you know. Oh, yeah. the, oh, yeah. But I think you've talked about this before. There's this kind of thought in a lot of fantasy of just like the first book's an homage to Tolkien to show like. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know what I know what the genre's like. I've paid my dues, right? And now it's like now I'm going to take it somewhere else. And then Jordan does that, of course, over somewhat. I think the landscape in the '90s, as people don't remember, is that if you weren't writing like Tolkien, you weren't getting published. So mm -hmm. he had to write that first book like it was a Tolkien book before he was able to do his own thing. So I feel yeah, like there are yeah. lots of these fanciers are like, well, the first book feels like this, but then second book, everything kind of changes. Yeah. I think yeah. there's a lot of like the first Red Rising book. Yeah, you can see a lot of Hunger Games in there. And then boom, it turns into its own thing. So I feel like a lot of a lot of authors are pressured. Hey, make this like that other popular thing. Yeah. And then once they prove in themselves then they can write what they actually want to write. And if I'm if I remember correctly, Jordan 
had a book deal for just one book with the eye of the world. He didn't, it's it, uh, the publisher wasn't, hadn't bought into the entire series yet, even though he had planned it to be like, you know, volumes and volumes. So the eye of the world also kind of reads like a self-contained story, but he's clearly setting up more. And that's why the great hunt gets so good in my opinion. Like I love the, the, you know, I mean, I'd always heard he planned it as a trilogy originally. <laughs> I think, I think, I think it was supposed to be like a trilogy or five or something, but like you could finish the eye of the world and be like, Oh, I discovered who the dragon is. There was a big battle that feels cool. Hmm. And, 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 you know, but obviously he wanted to do more and then he got to, and you know, and now we're all better off. Well, I'm glad to because to this day, I so couldn't tell you, I could so couldn't explain the end of eye of the world to you. So it's great. It's hazy. It's hazy. Suddenly some characters hazy. pop up. You have no idea who is supposed to be, you know, um, you're like, there are these other bad guys now. I think you can go back and watch that original, which is terrible, by the way. But people still watch those old Wheel of Time reviews. It's hilarious. But uh, I, I actually say that I'm not sure I can tell you what exactly the eye of the world is. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, hey. yeah. yeah. Um, oh, how do you feel about people like when they go back and look at your old stuff? Well, I mean, there's two things. I mean, you can probably understand this as someone with a channel successful as yours is you, you become a perfectionist somewhat. Mm -hmm. And when you upgrade your equipment and you get better, better production value, you go back and watch them all the stuff. And you're like, Oh God. I mean, back then I had no format. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I was a podcaster. So my audio was good, but I did nothing about video stuff. So like the, the audio wasn't matching my lips and stuff. The quality was terrible. And it was just, I, like I said, I had no format. So I would just be just, randomly talking about all kinds of stuff because i had no idea what i was doing i was flying by the seat of my pants but like i said those first three were really just for me mm -hmm. you know to go back to and then i started being like okay well how would i talk to this if i was telling someone else about it so but yeah, yeah. i hate that when that's someone's first impression of the channel because they look at him like oh this guy he's, he's got some good stuff but a uh, good lord his production value is awful because i still get yeah. comments on those videos like upgrade your camera bro and i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. video bro you know <laughs> my <laughs> my old video yeah my my very first so I've I've been on YouTube now. Next month will be more, my one year mark. Wow, um, your channel's one and a half times the size of mine, and you've been here one year. Man, you, I've gotten very lucky, kids. right? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, um, my very first video, the camera was shaky, so I used some like bad stabilization software. <laughs> And it just moves around the angles, you know, the, it moves around and to this day, and that video happened to get big for me in a way I wasn't expecting. It got like a hundred thousand views wow. and, um, and it's mortifying now because people will continuously say, this is out of focus. Your camera is shaky. Your audio is bad. <laughs> no matter how good you get, you're always going to get somebody. I, I, I get people all the time. Like, Oh, yeah. you need to do this with your contrast and your white balances. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> you yeah, know, does yeah. it sound good? <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I, you're always going to have that. But yeah, going back to that, look, I'm glad people are still finding those because I, I'll get so many people be like, hey, every time I finish a book, I'll watch one of those. It's been, it was like, it'd be like I watched every one of these reviews after I finished a book and it was like, you know, reading a book with a friend or something. That's what I was going for. So I'm glad they still find that, you know, comforting. That's why I'll never, you know, get rid of those videos. But again, I, I hate it as a first impression. If that's the first yeah. time someone's, setting eyes on your channel is that old video with, you know, bad camera angles, bad lighting. <laughs> it's always yeah. like, Oh God, I wish, you know, you ever get that second chance, right. You know, to, to impress yeah. somebody. So what do you think those, so now that you've, you've been on YouTube for a couple of years um, cool. and I should say, you should say like um, my channel might be a little bit bigger, but like you're doing really well. If you look at the numbers, the number of channels that ever make it anywhere close to a hundred thousand is like minuscule when you compare it. Yeah. To I saw them in the top, like uh you go to social blade and you can do a lot of those statistics and it was like i, I was just excited because i reached like the top two thousand booktubers or youtubers in the states mm -hmm. like, that's yeah. that's great right that was like subscriber count it's like yeah it's like top 2500 or so i was like that's yeah, yeah. that's crazy because yeah, a lot of people do they will they'll do this be real gung-ho about it first and then they take like yeah. a month off and they never really come back to it say with podcasting it's a lot of podcasts yeah. statistically a lot of podcasts never make it past the third episode you know, yeah, like, I, I, I think it's the same here. Yeah, it's it's persistence, right? I mean, yes, I, I I got lucky early on, so that helped me a lot. But when it happened, my thought was like, okay, I'm gonna put out a, two videos a, a week now, for like mm -hmm. you know, just doubling down and doing it. But you know, but also you're really close to a hundred thousand. Like you're gonna get to a hundred thousand this year. I uh, should, I mean, unless they have like another purge, should happen next month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Right. That's fancy. That yeah, that's great. I'll be happy to see it. It feels good when you get the play button. Yeah. It, uh, hey, how fast did they get that to you? <laughs> um. So in, in about two weeks after it happens, 
they'll send you an email and it's going to look like a, it's going to look like a scam because it's not from YouTube. It's from someone else. It really? says like, you need to put in your address and your name <laughs> and then like what you and want to have in your The last four of your social. It, yeah. <laughs> it looks a lot like it. I, I actually like, I, I had to reach out to some friends of mine who have YouTube channels to be like, am I going to like, give away my identity like (laughs) like, you know is 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 this okay and they were like oh yeah and then i think it took like two weeks so about a month after you hit 100 000 you'll have you'll have that play back me it's one of those things like i said in the end doesn't matter sure people see the subscriber number and they think that that means you have you know credibility you know but it's fun because you know i I think when we start these youtube channels we think like oh man if i get like five thousand subscribers that would be amazing right so you ever think you ever gonna get close to a hundred thousand it's just it's a nice accomplishment, you know, yeah. but I'm, I'll be glad that I can stop like always counting, feeling like I'm counting down to it. You know? Exactly. And like, I watch, fun. I watch like a ton of booktube channels that have like 2000 subscribers yeah, or like 500 yeah. subscribers because they're good doing good stuff. Right. And, mm-hmm. and the reason I wanted to make stuff was like, I wanted to talk about books with people, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so anyone who's just getting on here and doing that is like doing well, in my opinion. So like, yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of these smaller channels, they say that they get frustrated if they don't have like instant success. And I'm like, man, just, Keep hustling. If you got good stuff, it, it, it'll get found after a while. But I, I know a lot of people, they'll, they'll have perfect, you know, audio and video when they first yeah. start. So they're already ahead of me in that regard. But, you know, they, they get really frustrated if they don't have success like right away. And I, I just I, I just try to encourage them, tell them, to yeah, just yeah. keep going. It, it, you'll get there. But it's it's not going to happen overnight. And you, never, be overnight. and you never know what that video is going to be that right. blows up for the first time. Right. The mm-hmm. first one that gets 10,000. Right. Is like it's a, it's like amazing. Yeah, um, my first one had like you know twenty thousand, and <laughs> you know it was downhill from there for a while. But it, it wasn't until I started talking about Kindles, apparently, that <laughs> I really yeah. started to blow up. Oh, you know, okay, I'm gonna take a quick diversion for what I want to talk about. You know, I got. Did you get a Kindle scribe? I did. I did. Yeah, I gave mine away. Like I got rid of it. I had thrown out the packaging and stuff. I went back to this one real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just did. It, yeah, yeah. I couldn't return it because I got. I got had gotten rid of like some of the accessories on accident or something, but I just hated it. I hated using it. It was too big. It was like, what, why do I own a Kindle? I own a Kindle. It's good for like educators or students, or maybe even authors, you know, they're scribbling and stuff like that, but it's just, it's not a daily reader. It's not convenient whatsoever. And if you got an iPad, it's redundant. My, my, my e-reader is like for reading in bed. Like that's like my, uh, my use case. Right. Right. But if I have to hold it with two hands and hold it like this. Yeah. I took it on that cruise with us and I was like, this is terrible. And I went back to my my oasis by day two. (laughs) Yeah. That's no good. So what do you think has been like your, like your favorite thing though, about succeeding on YouTube or just being on YouTube for, for a couple of years? Uh, Just finding like-minded individuals that love books, you know, I mean, how many people, and you probably get this a lot. How, how do you read so much? Or why do you read so much? And it's like, why do I read so much? That's, that's a really weird question. And I just try to explain to him. It's like, reading isn't a chore for me. Reading is something I've always done for fun. It's something yeah. I love to do. And if you don't watch a ton of TV, you don't scroll social media for hours per day, you got lots of time to read and you don't even yeah. think about it. So it's just, it, I think it was just finding that there was other people out there like me who reading was their favorite thing. Because in real life, like I said, I, I would get more, what are you reading forwards than what are you reading? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And it was, it was really, it sucked because I didn't think that there was anybody, in the, in the States especially, it seems like, no, everyone's just, I'll wait for the movie type now. You yeah, know? And yeah. That's, that's a shame. That's a shame. So just finding there are other people out there like that. And it's so much more of a positive community. Than talking about movies is because movies oh, okay, we know how yeah. nasty that can get right yeah, yeah. uh but in books i was like when i first started i was blown away by how positive all the comments were i was like i, I told my wife i was like all oh, my pie i talked about sports and then i talked about movies and i was like nine out of ten comments are nasty you know yeah, and i was yeah. like this is like 99 percent positive and she's like well stupid people don't read and i'm like <laughs> That makes yeah, more okay, yeah, yeah. yeah you know you know you get you get nasty comments sometimes like i get a you know uh um, funny <laughs> if i'm having a if i'm having a uh if i'm having a video blow up i might get a nasty one every day mm. but i'll get i'll get five positive ones for every nasty one right um and and it, my favorite thing is when the nasty comments contradict each other about like me or about the, the video you know, you both love and hate that book. Yeah. Oh, or, or something like you pick these books because they're like pretentious books, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Or you pick these books because they're easy. Right. Something <laughs> like this. Yeah, like, I'll get that in the same video. And that always at least you get to laugh when you get like the, uh, the, the best one is like they, they don't believe you're actually reading these books. I'm like, man, I would have yeah, picked yeah, a yeah. much more 
something with a much more mass appeal if I was going to bullshit about about, about reading about doing yeah, something yeah. and making YouTube videos about it. Why would if I, I wanted to make if I wanted to make like a lot of money on YouTube, I would have made a personal finance channel. Like yeah, or I would have made like, a video like ranting about Star Wars movies or something. Yeah, ex exactly. That, that yeah, needs yeah. to do really, really well. You know, so that's like what quit their jobs. So that, that so that's one thing. Like I think you and I both on our videos, and this is true for a lot of booktubers, but I like it is that we're pretty positive. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, you know, ninety nine percent of the stuff we say is pretty positive. Where I think a lot of the mo movie YouTube is really critical. Oh yeah, it's it, it, it's. Rage gets the clicks is what they say. That's why I laugh when people tell me that, you know, I'm just I'm doing stuff for clicks. And I'm like, yeah. yes, talking about Stephen King videos, which don't do incredibly well on YouTube. That's I'm doing this for clicks. Let me tell you. I think you and even put some out some time. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. I got like, yeah, I got like four dollars off that video. Look out. Look yeah, out. Yeah. I'm quit my job. You know, so yeah. They, um, well, let's talk about like one of your kind of spicy videos recently, though, because oh. you're almost always positive. But you put out a fantasy adaptation video. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was, I was surprised at the reaction to it. Yeah, it was. And it, and it did. It seemed to do well for you. Yeah, I haven't looked good. at the numbers today, but like, like about fifteen thousand views in three days. So. Yeah, for it, me that's really good. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I know that's solid. a Tuesday for you, but for me, <laughs> for me that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's that that that's really solid, and it's a little sad because it has a negative valence to it, so sure. people are going to click, right? Mm -hmm. Um, oh, let me see this. Yeah, people. I think there are people here who are like, I've been, I've been with uh, watching Mike for years, and I found out Jared last week. This is great. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, but you know, so you did this fantasy adaptation video, and I thought it was good. I thought you made some really good points there because, like, I've struggled with. I don't think there have been many good fantasy adaptations in the last like five years or so, at least. You know, we kind of had we maybe we got spoiled with the Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, like because it was just so so high quality. Um, and, and that's like been years. History and act like Game of Thrones wasn't good after like season three. It was good for a long. Oh time. yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. I think. So I, I think. I, like I think Game of Thrones was really solid. That now everything's like we've got to be the next Game of Thrones. And it's just, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, so, it's so really Game of Thrones was was really solid. Now I was not a Game of Thrones. I, I was not a Song of Ice and Fire fan until mm -hmm. the show, and I think uh, season two had come out or something like that. It would have been shortly before A Dance with Dragons came out because it was right. I started reading the books right before A Dance with Dragons came out. Mm -hmm. And then I read all the, the, the first like four really, really fast. Lucky. I had to wait five years for Dance with Dragons. At the time, I thought that was so long. It's so funny in hindsight. Yeah. Um, and um, I then I, I remember I was going to wait for a paperback of A Dance with Dragons. And then I was like, out of town and I just like at a bookstore. I saw that hardback and I was like, all right, I'm getting it. And I devoured mm -hmm. that book. I devoured it. Um, so I was, I was a big fan of a song of ice and fire, but I didn't have to go with the long way. And now of course, now of course we're just waiting forever. Um, which I know people have very strong feelings about, but, uh, but any, anyway, before they went kind of off script or before they stopped being book material, a song of uh, the game of Thrones show was like really, really good. I thought that was, uh, I thought it did really, really well. They started deviating more and more because there's just so, when you get to a dance of dragons, there are so many plot lines. Yeah. And I think um, they had to start doing their own thing because they didn't have anything else. So they kind of made some choices, but I think we've, that's been talked to death about what happened yeah. to that show. But, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I still count it as a good adaptation. I, it, I would say, over, I would say it was good. And parts of that big battle in Winterfell in the last season looked good. When you could see it, it was also very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, it, it, anyway, like so. There, so there have been good at fantasy adaptations, mm -hmm. but a lot of them have been bad recently. I did not wish, watch Rings of Power, so I can't say anything about that. I I, I didn't watch it. I wasn't Ooh, particularly lucky. interested. Ooh, you're lucky. Um, but as a giant Wheel of Time fan, I was so excited for that show. Um, and uh, folks, we're gonna be lightly spoilery for that for that first season. Uh, you know, we won't talk too much, I guess, but I, um, I, I was so excited for the show. I was so excited that they were doing premiere screenings a week in advance of the first three episodes in Austin. And I got tickets to go. I stood in line for two and a half hours talking to other wheel of time fans about how excited we were to see this, to, to see the, this show. And then we all go to the movie theater and I should have known that it was going to be a bad time because I got charged four times for one beer. <laughs> uh, on my, and I should have just known this was a bad sign. And then the first, the first scene starts of the of the pilot, and um, you're like, 
okay. Not what I thought, but okay. First episode goes on. You're like, okay, pilot's not bad. Pilot, pilot's got some good stuff, right? Episodes two and three. There's like one really good moment in episode two, I think, when they like sing while they're riding on horseback. That felt mm -hmm. cool. Um, I think, though, those first three episodes were like the highlight of the show, probably. Exactly. Exactly. And, and yet the energy leaving that theater felt very different than the energy going so into the So the instant theater. reaction, there, was, there wasn't no very much in denial. People were, they, they didn't like I it. Noticed, I noticed when we were going in, when we were in line, we were like talking loudly, right? I could overhear every conversation. And I went by myself and I, I just talked to people the whole time. And I don't like just randomly start up talking, but it was like, wait, I'm surrounded by people who love my favorite fantasy series. So of course we can talk, right? And I noticed that when we were leaving, all of the talk, like conversations were kind of like quieter and like Low in energy. the groups that, and there was like this area where you could go and be interviewed about what you thought of the pilot or like what you thought of the show, like Amazon would interview, uh, uh, interview you. Yes, Philip is concurring that uh, the singing on horseback scene. Yeah, yes, yeah. that was a good. But I noticed that there was not a line to go get interviewed by Amazon <laughs> about how much you liked the show. Mm. Uh, and we all just kind of left deflated. And I thought, OK, let's see what happens. You know, like, let's let's see what happens. And I think by the end of that first season, I. I felt defeated, right? <laughs> I just... Well, I run a positive channel. So Madison and I had been planning for a year plus in advance to do our after show about each episode. And so we were both like, I mean, we were texting to each other. We were watching it at the same time. But what we're talking about, when like, we were 50-50 on positive, negative. But when we did our record our episodes, we're like, let's try to keep, let's just try, kind of talk about the things that we liked, you know. And so it kind of got turned into this thing about, oh, Mike's an Amazon shill. He loves this show. He's seen <laughs> these phrases. And I'm like, no, I'm just not going to just completely take a shit on it. Because that's just like my style. You know, but by I think by like episode six, she and I, we just couldn't take it anymore. We just started just dumping on it. And that's why we decided we're not even going to, I mean, I don't even plan to watch season two, but that's why we said we weren't going to do an after show for it anymore. Cause it was just like, it's not my channel. That's, 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 that's not the way we do it. Cause it's just, it wouldn't be anything good. But the thing is, is you go back and you watch it. I think about it. The pilot, like really, I had like, a, I didn't like the change to Perrin, obviously who did. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. I didn't, I didn't like, uh, you know, how fast they left Evansville. And of course, the CGI wasn't the best. Still, these were things I was like, that's nitpicky. That's stuff that could be fixed. This is stuff you see in every pilot. It's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the Moraine and Lan, like synchronized fighting, I thought worked really good because you kind of mm -hmm. got to see like the warder bond. You know, there were a few parts of that I was like, good. I did not like Matt's parents. So no, I, no. Yeah. So yeah. I said, we had things we didn't like, but in hindsight, it was like, that was nothing compared to what was coming. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> it was nothing at all. So, I think it was like episode four where we were like, it's, 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 it's different. It's deviating, but it's still really good. It's really good TV. Mm -hmm. I thought, I thought it was, it was still pretty good. You know, I, we're, we're enjoying it. And just five, six, seven, eight, just more, each episode, each week is worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And my wife's never read it and she didn't mm -hmm. want me to tell her anything. So she could watch it. And she was enjoying it for the most part. When we got to episode eight, she was like, this show's just breaking its own rules. This show makes yeah, no yeah, sense yeah. anymore. So I'm like, uh, uh, maybe you and I disagree about this. I'm not sure. I don't mind if an adaptation veers from the source material as long as they have like a good reason and they do it well. And sure. if you can do something well, I'll, I'll forgive a lot of things. The Foundation TV show, for instance, does not really follow Isaac Asimov's book super that's closely. Why I that's why I refuse to read it until the show's over. But I've like, heard... Doing the show? <laughs> I eventually got bored with it. I don't watch a lot of TV, so that's like why I don't fit it, follow up on stuff. But like I thought it was doing fine. And they made interesting choices and they were like doing a cool thing on their own, right? And that felt that felt okay to me. But with the Wheel of Time show, it was like... You're, it's not a faithful adaptation and it's done poorly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you put both of those things together, I just did not like I, no, I one of those, like, like it doesn't have to be a page or page adaptation. I mean, shoot, there's lots of changes made to the Lord of the Rings trilogy from the books. Lots. Yeah. yeah. And I liked what they did because it's sometimes I'm like, I understand that's probably not going to translate to the screen very well. And then but then other times I'm like, so why did you take these two characters out but then create a new one? Things yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. that that bug me or just changing the completely assassinating a character that that drives me crazy yeah. but uh yeah when it's it, it still needs to be recognizable i feel yeah. like and but uh, you know one of my biggest things is like these screenwriters think that they're better writers than the authors and that drives yeah. me nuts yeah. you're not you're not but, stop it so i haven't read the source material for this one but there was a show on apple tv recently that i really liked i watched it right after the baby was born i was staying up all night uh and that was um silo 
yeah, which yeah. is a sci-fi adaptation. I haven't read I haven't read the books. I'm gonna yeah, going to I have, I have I have but I thought that was excellent. I thought that was really well done. And so I've heard it's pretty faithful to the show, but also the, like you know, they had to make their own changes. Sure. I think they, sure, they I, you know I read some doing articles. they have Hugh Howie on the set and they're listening to him. That's the author. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This is this is not something hard to do. I never understand why they say, Oh, the author is going to help out in any way they can. They're like, no, we don't want them here. I, I don't yeah, never yeah, understand. No, 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 no thanks. Uh I think Tom, I, to Philip, I think you're totally right here. Tom Bobadil was destined never to be on screen. I don't think Tom Bobadil would have worked worked on screen. I thought it would. I think it would have come Tom off like as. Tom Bobadil. Oh, you hate Tom Bobadil? No, I like Tom Bobadil fine. I just don't think. I love that. I love that section. I think it would have come off as silly. And, and also, I'm like, how do we know they didn't? They just didn't show it on screen. How do we know they yeah, didn't? Yeah, yeah. There you go. But you know, like that the, that early parts of Fellowship of the Ring, like they get caught stealing mushrooms. Like there's like mm -hmm. it's much lighter, you know, in tone. It, and then it gets steadily darker. The show, I mean, the, the movie gets darker faster, right? Mm -hmm. So Tom Bombadil would have been like a total break, I think. Yeah. Um, so I feel okay with that. You know, again, you can make changes. They just need to be for a good reason and they need to be done well. Because usually the author upset, had a reason. Uh, I was more upset about no Barrow White than I was no no Tom Bombadil. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. whatever. It's all good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fit between, I think he's saying about the silo books of the trilogy is good. But yeah, I, I thought it was, I thought the show was well. They had great set design. It was a great, a great pacing. I cared about all the characters. It just, um, I mean, I kind of felt like I was watching a Fallout TV show before the Fallout TV show happened. I, yeah, me, me and my wife talked about this. The very, very Fallout 3, and I was like, now when they had that that Fallout show on Amazon, everybody's going to be like, ah, this is ripping off Silo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So they, they definitely won that race, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know Tim Kaine, the, one of the guys behind um, uh, Fallout, he now makes YouTube videos where he just talks about... Uh, game adaptation or game development no kidding no i didn't know that. yeah 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 it, he um i know this because he commented on my my science fiction book list to tell me that we he, he and i liked some of the same books and i was like is that the tim kane wow. <laughs> and then awesome. he started making videos so i was like i was blown away um but like what do you think like is the probably the biggest problem with fantasy adaptations like why can't they get them right lately do you think it's just the writer's uh, attitude towards the source material? or I think so. There's no love for the source material. They think they're better writers than the other. Because they just, the if I ever hear, oh, we're doing our own thing. We want to make it our own. It's the biggest red flag in the world. Tells me, well, so you're basically just taking the name. That's all. Uh, and the <clears throat> biggest one for me, I think, as a consumer, is just the way that they just are just so nasty towards fans these days. I was like, dude, why are you so nasty to your to the people, why are you biting the hand that feeds? You know, I just, I just as a business major, it doesn't click for me. Why you would do? Why would you attack your eyes like that? And there's like no accountability. It's like no one can yeah, ever just come yeah. up like, you know what? We messed up. We read the room wrong. It's always no, you're this and you're that, and it's this fault. And then all these people just keep failing upwards, and that's why I don't feel like anything's going to change. So, yeah. So we we can look forward to God of War, right? I've actually never played the God of War game, so I don't know. Oh, I, don't I have know like my, one of my favorite franchise, that and Zelda. So hopefully. Yeah. I don't think that, that I don't know if they'll ever, I want to say they'll make a Zelda movie now that, that Mario did really well, but I don't know. Nintendo's very protective of their of their properties. Yeah. I kind of respect. I them. would love, I would love to see a Zelda movie just because I've played a lot of Zelda games. I think I've almost never actually finished a Zelda game. Like I, I always just like at some point give up. But um, but like I always, it always feels so cool. Like the like every time you start a new Zelda game, you're like, this is a yeah, cool it's thing. an adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's p let's pivot a little bit to, to something a little more straightforwardly positive. I want to talk about books that you learned about because you came onto BookTube, right? Oh, so, like, um, yeah, and some of your favorites because, like, I mentioned this last week in my live stream that Wheel of Time is still currently my favorite fantasy series of all time. There is a there is a series that I think might top it based on my experience with the first book in the series, how much I love it, and mm -hmm. that's Sun Eater. Ah, all right. That's one that I've gotten a ton of people to read, and now it's like I'm I'm happy. The snowball effect has taken place. I got a ton yep. of people to read it, and then they told two friends, and then they told two friends, and it's just kind of that word of mouth thing in that series because Christopher's an awesome guy. I think he's a super super talented writer. So I'm yep. glad more people are, are are. That's why I tell people if you feel like that Red Rising's a little too, you know, Star Warsy for you, and you want something a little more philosophical and wants of the more god emperor dune i think that uh yeah i think that sunny yeah. is probably the series for you for sure and uh yeah i'm just glad that more people are discovering it so that's awesome so, that's awesome. so my, my my reading has really slowed down in the past couple of months because of the baby um it turns out he likes mm -hmm. to take up my time yeah. but sun eater has been such a pleasure to read I, it's been like so much fun and um 
I was actually texting a group chat of mine with some friends who I thought would like it out of the four guys in there, or so the three other guys, only one of them was willing to read it. Two days later, he sends me a message saying this rules. And then yeah. he went to his book club and was like telling people that they should That's read awesome. Sunny. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he should be a household name for sci-fi fans. Cause that guy is, he's awesome. Exactly. You know, I, I'm someone, so uh, I've, I've wanted to write actually like a, a novel for a while. I've been kind of working on it <laughs> and I don't want to compare myself to Rocky in any way, but like everything that I love in science fiction and fantasy like Rocky is doing it way better than I ever could. Like he's just fantastic, but he, his taste and my taste are like so aligned. Mm. Like he's drawing on like Roman history a, a ton. So, you know, he's a little Pierce Brownish in that way, but he's got that heavy. Oh, Gene I'm Wolfen convinced influence. those two, if they got together, it would be like the ultimate keg party. Those two would yeah. be like brothers. It's ridiculous how much they're similar in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. They should just talk about Plutarch for hours. Yeah, they, or would. they would. They yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> would. Yeah. That's my goal. To eventually get those two hooked up to talk to each other yeah. about these things, but the but yeah, because like, me, I think uh, Lonesome Dub is probably the biggest one that oh, I probably yeah, yeah. never would have read if it weren't for this channel. Uh, that, that's mm -hmm. that, I mean, Shogun and Lonesome Dub is like the two big like epics that I get recommended all the and 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 uh and uh War and Peace, which I just I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think I'm ever gonna read that one. Yeah, yeah. No offense to people who love it, it just doesn't sound like my my, my thing. But I I want to read Shogun next year. But I, that and Robert McCammon, or that's that's probably two books that are authors I would have never ever picked up if not for you know just feedback on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I um yeah, so I think I also learned from you. You got me back into reading Red Rising as well mm. because I had read the first one and I thought it was good, but like I started the second one immediately after. And it feels so different. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I don't know if I, 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 I don't know if I would love that. Um, and then I, so I've set it aside and now I'm kind of kicking myself because that second book in red rising is so good. It's way better than the first book. It blows yeah. it out of the water. It just takes maybe a quarter of the book to really get going. And then suddenly it's back to being nonstop action without mm -hmm. like the tropes that I didn't like in the first book. Yeah, like I don't really like the. I can arena watch. Thing. I have it still yeah. on my channel. Even though I did all the re-reviews for the, this this run up to the new book. My original review of Red Rising, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to continue. I was like, this yeah. is like the most disappointed I've been in a a really hyped book in a long time. And then I read book two, and I was completely blown away. And then like I just I never it's just immediately became one of my favorite series. So I yeah, that's I, I said I feel like the I feel like the publisher pressured him. Hey, can you make it more like Hunger Games? Because we're looking to capture that audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he kind of. That's a, that, things and then did his own thing after that. that. That that's a great example of a book two changing the series for the better. You know, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a really nice example of it. I've I've started the third book and for some reason I paused, but I do that fairly often. I'll read like part of a book, pause, and then come back to it at some point. I'm fairly okay with like picking it back up. Um, and I thought it was really good. I I think that's great too. The ending of the second Red Rising book is like oh yeah, oh yeah, it's like that's a kick probably... in the gut. You know? That was uh, since like the Red Wedding. That was the most the book ending. It shocked me. So it was amazing. Yeah. But like around that time, I decided I was like, I'm going to be finishing up Red Rising. And this is supposed to be my fun reading. Fantasy and science fiction is like my fun reading. You know, then I have like my the reading I call like my serious reading, um, which is pretentious. And I apologize for it. But whatever. <laughs> it's my channel. So but my fun <laughs> reading. But the books I was reading for fun lately were Red Rising. And then I was reading Malazan. And that's why I got to talk to Philip in September. And, yeah, and then I, I, I started sucking. You guys would use a lot of twenty dollars words in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's the only time I'm going to make people call me Doctor Henderson in the chat. Right, the, so it can be Doctor Henderson and Doctor Chase um, talk about fantasy. Um, doctor, doctor. Yeah. But uh, you know, I real I think maybe I I went a little too on the hard on like the dark and long books <laughs> for a while. So like I got to find some light fantasy to read. Yeah, uh -huh. that's how I think with me. That's why I've really, really latched onto that Bound of the Broken series by Ryan Cahill because I was like, I just, I didn't realize how much not everything has to be the darkest of the dark to enjoy an yeah. adult fantasy. You know, yeah. you can have those moments, but not everything has to feel like you're swimming through mud, you know, which a lot of these grim dark series do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I feel that. No, Philip, you can't, don't wear your tweed. We have to wear our robes. So <laughs> we're, we're going to wear our, our, our your robes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's going to be, oh, that's going to be great. Someone wants us uh, to argue about Blood Meridian. I don't want to. I understand why. Or I, I get it. I am content just stating emphatically that Mike is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I know, I know I'm on the unpopular opinion. Like I have a video series called Unpopular Opinion, but I was like, I think I lost a lot of subscribers when I said I didn't like Blood Meridian. So I was like, I'm not going to poke the bear again. You, you, so, you know, it, I, what I want to say that I, this, I commend you for it though. I mean, I don't commend you for being wrong, but I, <laughs> I, I, um, I commend you because you took a modern novel by a beloved author who has like a hardcore fan base in addition to just being generally renowned. You took the novel that is arguably, you know, in a top 10 of the great American novels and had the guts to come out and say, yeah, it's not that good. <laughs> if, you, if you say so, my friend, if you say so. <laughs> no, no, that was a thing, the thing I said is uh, when I started this, I'm always going to be honest. I'm yeah. going to always make you happy, but I'm never going to bullshit you about something. I love yeah. the road. So I, I think yeah. Cor McCarthy, is, he's talented. I, I still wish he'd use punctuation. I don't get yeah. why if I if I don't yeah. use punctuation, I'm called illiterate, but he doesn't do it. Yeah. He's called genius. But you know what? I guess he's earned that. Right. He's earned that. Right. He, he has. I also, um, the first time I ever experienced Cormac McCarthy was The Road, but I listened to it as an audio book, oh. which works so well because his cadence, like his rhythm is so powerful. And if you have the right narrator who will like really get into it, it works very, very well. Um, but I wish I could audio. Know, I wish yeah. I could do it. Oh, I love I like audio. I get so much more done, more so much more read if I if I if I could audio. Yeah. Um, okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna rant for a moment here because sure. in one of my videos called How to Read More, I mentioned audiobooks. And I said, I know some people don't consider audiobooks reading, but I do, so I'm gonna set the problem aside and just assume that it's reading. And I get so many comments that are like, audiobooks aren't reading, audiobooks aren't reading. I'm going to now inform everyone in this chat about the history of reading. For the vast part of, of human history, when people read books, they were read to them because they were illiterate. Even if you could read, you typically had someone read to you so you could recline and restfully listen to this great book. The words would wash over you, right? This is how people experienced Homer. This is how people experienced like holy text. This audio, it, audiobooks are just doing it on your phone. It's the same thing, man. And there's a great book called A History of Reading. I highly recommend it. The idea of reading silently in our mind is mostly a modern invention. And we don't really have strong evidence of people reading silently until like the seventh century. So, well, sir, how dare you bring facts <laughs> to this conversation? This is the internet. There's no time for stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yes, this is like, I don't respond to, ang I don't leave angry comments. You know, I, I never respond to Ed to negative comments. It's not good for your health, but, um, I just had to state this out loud, guys. Audiobooks are fine because it's how it, it simulates how people would have read for centuries. I tell people all the time, look, I can't do it. I'm not against it. Here's my deal: consume the story however it works best for your life. As long as you're getting the story in your in your head somewhere, I'm I'm fine with it, man. Do what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, oh. like, I feel like I feel like your audience is probably going to be more eyes readers, whereas my audience of uh, the majority of them is audio, sometimes yeah, audio only. You know, so I I, I People yeah. think I have like hot takes about it. I'm like, look, it's fine. I just can't do it. I think yeah, it's yeah, great yeah. if you can do it. But I will say there are some people who, for whatever reason, do feel like it's a race and they have yeah. put a three speed. And then you try to talk to them about it, like, oh, I don't remember that. I'm like, what the shit you don't remember? <laughs> I'm fine yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. you know? So I feel like I get oh. cr criticized because they feel like I'm saying that it doesn't count because I say you mm -hmm. you're not retaining anything. That's not what I mean. I mean, some yeah. people who do be like, I've got to read 120 books a month. And I'm yeah, like, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't understand that. My, my wife listens to audiobooks on like two X, three X speed. <clears throat> and she's not a native English speaker. She learned English as like a kid, but she grew up in China. English is her second language. And she can still listen to these books at like three X speed. And I have no idea how she does it because I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, how me, it's just, it's just, I, you can have listening ADD and I have reading ADD. Yeah. So I have people that have a hard time understanding it's, I think just too many years of the blocking out noise, you know, because you mm -hmm. work in finance, you just got to learn to block everything out and focus on what you're doing sometimes. That and heavy typing kids. on old IBM keyboards. As yeah, people, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, and then it's just kids. You just get used to, I don't want to hear that sound, so I'm just going to block out everything. And you can't turn that yeah. off. Yeah. So I'll be listening to an audio book, and I'm like, I have no idea what just happened the last 20 minutes. You know. Yeah, so that happens to me sometimes when I'm listening to audiobooks, but it's when I listen to like fantasy or science fiction audiobooks. So I almost never do. The exception is that the narrator for Red Rising is so good that I don't want to read the books. I just like love him as a narrator. It's like this Irish guy who yeah. Like, people just does, like, people on my Discord get mad because I say because I call him a Scrooge McDuck. 
<laughs> but he was great. He was great. And he's like the exception. I mostly listen to non I listen to like history books as, as, um, as my audiobooks, And for some reason I'm able to pay attention better there. Yeah. My wife was like, Hey, you used to listen to your finance lectures. You know, when you went back, I went to school later. So you listen to your finance lectures on, you know, in your car or on your head, in your, in your headphones, something like that. I'm like, I guess it's just different. You know, I'm not having yeah. to memorize 14 different countries and who all their successors are, you know, I wasn't having yeah, to do yeah. that. Oh, okay. So, so fit to be read mentioned when we were talking about light books, brothers K this reminds me folks, if you're not in my discord, I announced today I'm doing a read along in September of the brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. Uh, so if you're interested in reading along with me, talking about it with me, you can join my there, discord. There's an author. I always get criticized because I have no idea how to say his name. Dostoevsky. You can do there it. There you go. And I, or at least you're doing it well enough to pass <laughs> as an American, right? You know, we, 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 we have to give up on like, um, there's some, some book guy, a booktuber whose name I can't remember. He's escaping me. He made this very funny video. Like if we pronounced other authors, like we pronounce French authors, because like when people hear like a French author, they like really go for the French pronunciation. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so he was like, so he was like, you know, um, doing it for like Welsh and like Russian. <laughs> and it sounds so ridiculous when you do it for that. Right. we have to admit, we're going to, we're going to kind of anglicize these names a little bit. And that's, that's, mm -hmm. no, that's no big deal. Just like actually, you can always tell who who read the book and who who audioed it because if they audioed it, they're spelling all the characters' names wrong. If they read yeah, it, yeah. they're saying all the names wrong. Yeah, 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 so. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the what's the Sanderson joke that you see on like Reddit or sometimes? If you go there, if someone misspells a character name, I think they always respond with like "Ah, a true Voren man." Uh, I, because I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, uh, because yeah. men, men men can't read, right? In the stormlight. That's the that's the that's the funniest thing about that is I still get so much hatred. Because have you read Mistborn by Brandon? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm. Uh, I, I, we can talk about Sanderson in a minute. I'm actually. I consider myself a fairly big Sanderson fan. I still get so much criticism because I called Ellen Eland when I read uh, it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I said Eland, and I'm like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure the brain of Sanderson don't care that I said that I called him Eland, but you know. I don't know if you ever heard Sanderson gave like a uh, like answered a question about how to say Kelsier, and he's like, well, I say Kelsier, but actually in the book it's Kelsier. And I had, and everyone was like, but you're the author and you say Kelsier. And he's like, yeah, I'm the author who pronounces it wrong. <laughs> I was so, <laughs> I was so <laughs> blown away yeah, by I that. feel like a hundred out of a hundred, if you ask authors, would you rather people say your character's name's right or not read your book at all? And they're going to take, I would want them to read my book. Absolutely. So like, absolutely. That's how they always feel. So Sanderson actually made it. If I kind of cheated when I made my top 10 fantasy list, because I was treating the entire Cosmere as a series. Mm -hmm. which a lot of people took issue with. And I would say if you, take, if you take the entire Cosmere, it's number 10 for me. It can, it can, it can crack my top 10. If you take any of the sub series, they're nowhere close because I'm mostly interested in all that weird background stuff that's going on mm -hmm. in the Cosmere. I'm in interested in like 10 fantasy series of all time. People got really mad that I count the Cosmere as one fantasy series yeah. And I'm like, it's just the way that I'm doing it, man. No one's telling you that you have to do it the same. That's just yeah. the way that I'm doing it. But and increasingly, we're seeing overlap, right? In some of these newer books, you're seeing, you know, I mean, without without spoiling it, your characters are appearing in other series, right? <laughs> the it is not as blurry as it used to be, and that's all I'll say. It's just like because when I think when I did that is it made the Cosmere move backwards in my rankings because I didn't really like Mistborn Era 2. I thought the most recent Stormlight Archive book was just okay. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. and I thought that Elantris is kind of kind of not that great. So I was like that, you know, as a whole, I was like, it's you know a good number eight or nine all time, which isn't bad, guys. It's a yeah, top yeah, yeah, ten. Yeah. I've read a lot of fantasy series, but you know, they were they were they were not thrilled about it. I think in a conversation with Philip, you you and he like described Sanderson as like a really, really top tier, like YA level writer. I and I think you can call and, this stuff because it's accessible for younger. Yeah, audience. especially, out older, especially, older especially prose wise, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's writing, he's writing to be as accessible as possible. He even sure, says this. He never reads Brain of Sanderson. Like, oh, wow, this guy is just a wordsmith. Yeah, you know, this is and he's, Ray Bradbury he's a, here yeah, or something. Yeah. You know, no, no, yeah. no one says that, but that, that isn't a criticism. He's just yeah, he's it's, a very accessible. It's what, it's what he's trying to do, and so you know, I view it as like he's he's very accessible. And like when the fifth Stormlight Archive book comes out, I'll read it the day it comes yeah, out. I'll start won. reading it oh, no. because it's because it's fun, right? It's just it's like pure it's pure fun for me. Um, I I say I actually like Miss Bordera too, like a lot until the fourth one, until the last one, and. I just zoned out and just like kind of finished it. I don't know why I just totally lost interest. 
I actually liked Wax as a character, and I liked Marcy as a character. Oh, so you like taking naps, apparently. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. What, that's what Wax did for me. He put me to sleep. And I think my least favorite character in the, in and that was Wayne, actually. He was good in that first book, and then I was like, ah, he's really not that funny anymore. Yeah, the, the the humor, the humor. Sanderson, um, and I say this again with a lot of love to Brandon Sanderson. He is not the funniest man in the world, mm-hmm. and when he and it's really hard for someone who's not very funny to write funny characters. Uh, and it's also why, like, I don't love Shalon or uh, in the other uh, uh, in in Stormlight Archive because she's never funny and people laugh. <laughs> and I don't. Want and there's nothing more as, like as someone who has a framed painting signed by Brandon Sanderson of her in my room. I I I, I get where you're coming from, but I still yeah, love yeah. the character. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, this is the this is the great thing though right well, there's just like lots of different characters there's lots of different books out there it's fun to talk about right. them with people who've read them even if like maybe i'm wrong about shallan you're wrong about blood meridian we'll call it e- <laughs> we'll, we'll call it even you know uh, look i see that's the thing is i am able to step back and be like hey it's a me thing it's definitely yeah. a me thing because no one else has this problem with these yeah. things so i i can look at a book like yeah. that and say yeah it's definitely like everybody, everybody, everybody loves the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hall. And I was, mm-hmm. this is what you guys think is the best trilogy in this whole series? I don't know. Yeah. So I, I, I can look at things and be like, clearly it's something that just missed with me. Yeah. I've never read Hop at all. I've never oh, read any Robin. I think you would love it. Yeah. So I think I have, and I, you know, recently, do you know like how Kindle has like that Kindle rewards program now sure. where you get credit? I recently realized I had tons of credit that I needed to redeem. So I suddenly had like 75 bucks in credit. So I bought like six Robin Hobb books. Mm-hmm. And so eventually they will go here, but I got to finish Sun Eater. I got to finish Malaza. And I've heard Robin Hobb can be dark because she tortures her characters. Now, have so, you finished Malaza before? No, never. How far have you gotten? I'm, I'm two books in. I started the third. I thought the third was really solid to start with, but I decided to start Sun Eater and take a little okay. break. Shoot. So Philip and I are going to talk about like the first two. Are you planning then, to keep going with it though? I, I I will. And I think in the end, I'm going to really like it. I think that these early Malaz and books, though, are so they're hard to make sense of in right. a lot of ways. And that's hard and, for some readers like myself who yeah. need to understand. Everybody's like, just don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. You, you know, you're not supposed to understand. It. I, it's hard for me to accept that. Yeah, you know? I, 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 you know, the only thing is that sometimes the uh, Erickson's writing, it, it's it's a it's so weird, but this is the only way I can describe it is that oftentimes I feel like the book is moving really fast and nothing is happening yet. And I like, like just suddenly something has happened and you're like, Oh, okay. But why do I care about this thing yet? Yeah, and then like some completely batshit thing will happen. Like, huh? And it's yeah. like, that's just the world, baby. That's just the world. <laughs> or like two characters are talking and then they come to a conclusion, which I think reveals something important about the world. And I'm like, I don't even know what all of these words mean. Uh, right. And, and you've just like stumbled on this. And right, yet right. the last, it's like, big- Ten percent of those books are great. The last ten percent of both of the first two books are great because they've had these oh, yeah. big battles, and he does those really well. Everybody would be like, I mean, I remember we were doing like a read along for it, and there were people like, oh man, book whatever seven or so, like now at least like Warrens are so much clearer, and I'm like, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. Uh, the reason I asked is because I'm on eight right now, and I'm beginning to wonder if you're going to finish the series before I do. We'll see. <laughs> You know, um, it it depends. I think honestly, I will I will maybe alternate Malazan and Sun Eater, but like like I said, right now Sun Eater is on deck to possibly be my favorite series of all time. Oh man, that's that's two very dense series to be reading at the same time. Yeah, but oh man, I yeah, I just I like them both, but I I mean Sun Eater especially because I'm a huge Gene Wolfe fan. I oh, love Gene. Sun Wolf. Eater is definitely gonna be your series, I, and I say that yeah. as someone who has not read Gene Wolfe. I just yeah. know Christopher on a personal level, and yeah. Gene Wolfe is like his idol. This Gene brings Wolf me Frank Herbert, but that's like yeah. his everything. So. This brings me to a very nice p- part of the stream that I had planned, which is called "Convince Mike to read certain books that I think he would actually like." <laughs> oh, Gene Wolf. One of them it's is book. Of, one of them is book of the new. Sun. Book of the new sounds weird, but it's it's actually I think easier to read than Malazan because um, you can really just get lost in his in his um, his prose and stuff. And I, I I think it's it's great and it's weird and you end it and you're like I don't know exactly what happened, but I loved it. But I won't push this one too hard. Actually, I was listening to another one of your talk about nothings with is it Joanna? There's an agent there. We don't and we don't say we don't it's say the agent. Yeah, um, and she mentioned Tigana, I think. 
And I think if you want to read a standalone fantasy series, Mike, when you tell me what you like about fantasy, one of the things you always say is that you like characters, sure. right? I think Guy Gavriel K, one, he has great pros. He has really, really great pros. If you need me and Philip to like team up and talk about this, we can do that. But um, the, sec the second thing is that plot is actually not his strong suit. It like the, the driving story is like a little meandering sometimes, but he's really, really good with characters. And he reveals things about characters that are so good that you end up caring about people on the opposite sides of battles um, in like a really powerful way. So then the battles mean something, right? Because oh, you got to be a great writer to pull that off. Not very many can do that. And we don't know the extent of it, but Guy Gavriel K basically, he played a heavy hand in preparing the Silmarillion yeah, yeah, for publication. Yeah. That's, that's, how I, that's how they first heard his name was that he yeah. helped finish the, the Silmarillion. So, so while, you know, I'll joke about Gene Wolfe all the time, I think you would really like Tygonic. And have it. it's it's have a great standalone. And one of those things that, I, I don't know, I feel like if you're into fantasy and science fiction, you're always getting into these, like, big 10-book series. Hmm. And if you want a light read, you read a trilogy, but each book is 750 pages. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right. I just started reading this one today, and I was exactly. like, yeah, great, a trilogy. But look, they're it, all like this, so it's basically five books. You know? But like Tigana, Tigana is like 600 pages, and it's and then it ends, and the story's over, and it's it's great. And I like, I really love fantasy and science fiction standalones, and I don't think they get a lot of love from publishers these days. I think there's a heavy yeah. thing towards series, but I love the guy Gavriel case putting out. Uh, no, it's like, that's like unicorn in fantasy. Cause it seems like everything now. Yeah. It's book number one of seven. I'm like, yeah, why? Yeah. why are we doing seven books? Why can't anybody do a trilogy anymore? You know, we're well, standalone. So I would say, I, I appreciate that authors can pull it off. When I think about trying to write a book, when I work on my book, um, I can't plan a trilogy. It's gotta be a standalone. Just the way I like frame things in my head. But um, I think for publishers, it's like, if the first book's a hit, you have a guaranteed hit for the second book, right? Um, as And so it's like a really nice bet to make as a publisher, I guess. So maybe there's like a heavy push to have series or to have trilogies where a standalone, then you're like, and now I'm going to write a new standalone with new characters and a new world and new magic, right? And you're and, not the first to uh, recommend the GGK to me. Uh, Rocky, yeah. obviously, that's, that's one of the greatest writers ever. I talked to Nicholas Eames. He wrote Kings of the Wild. Mm -hmm. uh, he says that's the greatest writer ever. Uh, Jake Bishop, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. He's been pushing that on me for God three years now. Yeah. So okay. I do have to Ghana. I just, okay. I, just, I, just I just don't know when. But yeah, yeah I, I yeah, I think I think that, and then getting you to read some Stevenson. But I think you said you're going to read Snow Crash. So I think we're, I think you're. Yeah, Snow Crash. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to do that before the end of the year. But uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's on there. I know that. I know you said that you're hoping that I come down on the. It's not as a divisive as a book as it seems like to me. It seems like people um, love it or hate it. So yeah, I, I think there's a couple of reasons. One of them is I say this as a um, as a fan of Stevenson. Um, some of his books don't have endings; they just end. <laughs> they uh, and I think Snow Crash is like that. If I'm remembering correctly, it's been a while since I read Snow Crash. Um, Seven Eves, which is a book I really like, and I think actually you would dig it. It's science fiction; it's not fantasy. I know you, but you read some science fiction. Um, it's got lots of cool stuff going on. The last third or fourth of that book. There's a giant time leap. You get a whole new set of characters. They go on an adventure, and then the adventure just kind of ends. Um, and yet, I like the book a lot. And Stevenson's kind of divisive like this. The only book of his that I've read that I think has like a solid, fleshed out ending is Anathem, which is like a book I love, but it's probably the least interesting on a character level. The characters there are a little bit flat in Anathem, and it's mostly about the ideas. Uh, but, you know, I but I, I don't know. I think with Snow Crash, at least there's enough like it's chaotic at times in like a cool way. I mean, you got a you got a pizza delivery guy who's also a hacker who carries a samurai sword around like that's the beginning of the book. Like, yeah, when I read the synopsis, I'm like, that sounds like Ready Player One completely ripped this show. <laughs> off. Like, there's huge. a lot. Of, there, there's a lot of that. There, There is a lot of that. So I think I think you like it. Oh, John is here. So that's hmm. Um, speak, her, speak her name and she will leap from the bushes and yes. assassinate you. That's her. <laughs> um, just answering this question from Chris. Um, the thing is, a lot like Chris Rocchio, the novel I was working on is sort of blurs the line between fantasy and science fiction. That's the that's all I can say. Um, have you ever thought about writing? Uh, Never. Like uh, yeah. I tell people this all the time. Not just because someone would completely wreck everything with a red pen. Tell that's a fragmented sentence. This one doesn't say there. There's a run on sentence. Not just for things like that. I just 
I would be so derivative of things that everyone else has done because all yeah. I would want to do is shove all my influences in there and it would just be a mashup of Lord of the Rings and, and Dune. And I'm like, I know a lot of authors have made a lot of success out of doing that. And I just like, I don't want to be that guy. So this is why I'm the worst Dungeons and Dragons player ever because I can't come up with a story like at all. That's why oh, I read, yeah. guys. I love other people to tell me stories because I can't think of a good one. I mean, because a lot of booktubers have sort of made the leap, right? To, to the author. No, no, and that's that's one of my most asked questions. You ever want to write a your own? Like, no, no, guys. I want to I want to read audiobooks. That's what I would love to do. I would love okay. to do that. Or you know, right. have like a a book podcast on Spotify or something like that. That's what I would love to have. Yeah. Man, yeah. so if I could write it so that my book needed a narrator with a vaguely Texas accent. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't, I'm just, a lot of people are always surprised when they find out I'm from Texas because I don't have a big Southern drawl or something like that. I'm like, because it's now them stereotypes you see in the movies aren't real, yeah, guys. Yeah, so yeah, if you go yeah, to yeah. East Texas, Lufkin, or something like that, sure, yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. get that drawl. But I was like, most of us just talk regular. We don't really have a hard accent. Also, I mean, you're in Houston. I'm in Austin. How many people who are in Houston or Austin are from Texas? You know, it's a... not many. I'm Houston's <laughs> such a, a melting pot because it's yeah. you know business capital. So I mean, I'm from Atlanta. So, yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm from up north. I'm from Ohio. You know, I'm from the Midwest. That's why I say like, hey, why don't they have real good uh, support for the sports teams out there? Because everybody has a team from where they came from. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's the, not it's mostly a transplant city, really. Is. The the only team that does well here in Austin is um, Cowboys. The, no, no. It, well, I I actually just don't encounter a lot of Longhorns fans, obviously for sure, college football. Sure. But um, we're talking about professional sports. It'd be Austin uh, Austin Football Club, the Austin Verde. The, uh, the the soccer team. Yeah. Um, and that's because we have a ton of people who move from Europe or from Asia to come yeah. work for various companies. And so the they're and you know they're all just like grew up liking soccer, right? So um, yeah, soccer's popular here too. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I've never been. I live really close to the stadium, but I've yeah, then, yeah, I sorry, I just as a sports fan, yeah, and I know this is gonna sound good to anyone who's not in the States, they're gonna just cringe when they hear this. Americans can't watch something that goes for an hour and a half and ends in a zero zero tie. They just can't. they're just not interested in yeah. it. And then they get mad because they use the word tie, not draw. So <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. It's American um, football for me, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So another series I wanted to bring up with you, though it's not one to convince you to read, it's just because I know you love it. But I have kind of mixed feelings. I thought it'd be fun to talk about is the Dark Tower. Okay. I got mixed feelings too. <laughs> okay, okay. My my view of the Dark Tower is that it's 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 Stephen King, and he's being super creative, and it's kind of amazing sometimes. Except sometimes it's also awful, and it's like the most it's the biggest mixed bag of a series I've read. When I did my top ten fantasy series, I gave it as like an honorable mention to be like I want to like just acknowledge that King wrote several amazing books in that series. Mm -hmm. But I could not put this anywhere close. To so, like for me, the books that I love from that are The Gunslinger, the first book. I think that rules. I know a lot of people are a little divided it. on it. I don't know why I get so much criticism. And then I love Wizard and Glass, mm -hmm. and then Wolves of the Kala. And then I realized, oh, I just wanted him to write, write like a dark Western fantasy. <laughs> That's, that, that's all I want. Yeah, people read that first book and it's kind of Western. I was like, it doesn't really get there again. Yeah. A little bit of a, you know, uh, Magnificent Seven, I think, when you get to Wolves of the Kala. But yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not really. I mean, it has a it has a cowboy in it, but it's not really what I would call a western. It's just it's yeah. a mashup of like everything. Here's here's my thing. I have white hot hatred for book six and a lot of the decisions he made in book seven. Like is book six where, like, Song of Susanna? Is that the Song of Susanna? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the, and people always say, "Oh, Mike hates the ending of Dark Tower." I don't hate the ending of Dark Tower. I don't like decisions that he made in six and seven. That's what mm -hmm. I try to tell people. I actually, like the ending. The ending was fine. It was a lot of the other things that kind of broke it for me, but I'll give him credit being like, he just, he just has so many ideas, I think. And at that point he had so much clout that just said, go for it. And that's what he did. So while it is a top five fantasy series from, for me all time, I also have a, one of my least favorite books he's ever written is in that series. Yeah. yeah but yeah. just because those first four books are just S tier for me, they're amazing. It's because uh, there's nothing else like that out there. I almost quit after song of Susanna. I, Here's a, here's a joke I always tell you. Look, I had to wait for these books, guys. You don't understand. Like, years between these. And then when you get uh, Wizard and Glass, you get a 500-page flashback. So our characters are just sitting on this, you know, this this uh, this uh, this road here for years I'm waiting to get this. And then you get there, and it's like, okay, well, five, I, I liked it, but still didn't kind of get to going where I go. And then, of course, you know he does something very, very meta in it. And I just hated that so much 
that I was in his book club at the time and we got sent book number seven early. Oh, wow. I didn't even yeah. read it at first. Yeah. I was so upset after so yeah. Susan, I was just like arms crossed. I just couldn't yeah, believe yeah. that this had happened. I felt like he rushed it because he got spooked about dying after he got hit by that car. And he yeah, said, yeah, I don't want to yeah. finish my series. And I felt like he rushed it. If he, if he had not rushed it, I feel like book seven would have come out maybe like 2020. Yeah, I really yeah, yeah. It took that long to finish the series if he had not rushed it. But, and, and I say, I no, 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 Philip, no. <laughs> yeah, Philip saying this, you know, when I first started on on YouTube, there were a couple of, of channels that I would look at sometimes. And this is when I was brand new. I was like, I wonder if I'll ever be as big as them. And one of them was Philip. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I like I loved Philip's videos. And I usually agree with what Philip said, but man, this 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 might be reached too far. Uh, I always tease Philip that his favorite book in a series is the most recent one that he's read, but I think yeah. that the Robin Hobb one's kind of kind of proven that not to be true. So we'll see. I'm going to talk to him tomorrow, and we'll find out. <laughs> I like I do like the ending of the last book. I, I think the ending there. I have not read Wind Through the Keyhole though. That mm -hmm. way, uh, and maybe I'll get to it at some point. I just I don't know. I just didn't have the energy. Like I just I was <laughs> like there was that about what happened in six and seven of the Dark Tower. Like I literally broke up with Stephen King for almost a decade. I didn't read. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And, and he's your favorite writer. He's like your favorite yeah. writer. Yeah, yeah, that's how upset I was. And then eleven twenty two six three. I'm huge. If I read any book that's that is nonfiction, it is either a, a rock autobiography or it's about the JFK assassination. I'm like mm -hmm. beyond obsessed with it. And so when that book came out, I was like, well, I've got to read this. And it was great. You know, it was yeah, like basically like him getting his real. mojo back, I think. So that's what brought me back, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I'm I very upset about Dark Tower. Very I've, the only king or the only Stephen King I've ever read, though, is The Dark Tower. I've never read any of his other books. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think it's I'm not a big horror fan mm -hmm. um, because I am. A scaredy cat. I, I get so scared so easily. Um, though I would say the one horror film I like at all is The Shining, but then of course, it's different. I, it's different, right? That's that's all I know. It's not as different as people. I mean, it's not like the, well, I just had that video about adaptation. It's not like that. It's just okay. you know character decisions that he made and some stuff. But there's great stuff in that movie that's not in the book. There's great stuff in that book that's not in the movie. So I, yeah, it's one of that yeah. rare exception where yeah. both are really good, but they're different. Like Jurassic Park, the book in that movie are totally different. They're both yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, oh yeah, because you're also a, you're also a big uh, big Crichton fan, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I, what I love about Crichton is he would take this stuff that I clearly was not born smart enough to understand, and he will put it in layman's term where everybody could understand. And he was great at that. Great. Yeah. This guy had like nine PhDs or something, yeah. and he basically explains time travel in a way that be like, you know, that actually sounds like it's possible. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. To, that guy was a wizard. Was. It does seem like he was very good at like high concept stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and so a lot of authors can get kind of lost in their in their concepts where they're like, cool idea. But where's the story? What I like right? about it is he would always talk about stuff that seemed like, well, that isn't really. Po well, I guess it's possible. But if will we ever get there and then like five years later, we're doing it. And like, yeah, wow, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. so a lot of stuff like like I talked about this recently that you read this old review when Disclosure came out. And this review is like savaging him saying, oh, like his 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 sci fi pipe dreams are too because he's talking about these things that can hold like 400 books on them. Mm -hmm. He talk, basically predicted the e-reader, and they told him yeah, he was yeah. stupid for this. And I was like, he was 15 years ahead of the curve on this one. So that happens a lot. And now I have like a thousand books on my e-reader, and it's nothing, right? You know, and then we have a scribe, uh, and we just don't like it. We just throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We, we, we've gotten to the point now where we can be picky about our e-readers, and we can decide right? it. that it's this amazing technology now. Some of it sucks, and we can just say that. That's totally fine. So what was a, what's been an experience, though, for you? going on to booktube where someone like gives you a book or it recommends a book for you and they're like mike you're gonna love it and then it just falls flat have you had anything like that yet well i mean someone did send me blood meridian so <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh i mean uh i've had a few uh there's a series by will white called cradle and yeah right this guy's a self-published author yeah huge fan base huge mm -hmm. and they're just convinced i was gonna like it and it's, i mean someone i mean viewers a couple of them combined together to buy me like every book that was out mm -hmm. so okay well i feel like i owe it to them to you know try this it just did not land for me and i'm just like why did you guys think that i would like this you know you guys i, I don't watch anime i don't yeah. like reading about people leveling up and stuff like that it's like this is that's not my thing at all so i, I think that was probably the big it hurt it hurt yeah, to yeah. say i didn't like it because all these people have spent all this money to send me these books yeah and i think i picked those I think I picked those up for free because he does that thing sometimes where I like put them all out for free when the new one's coming out. 
um, except the new one won't be free. So like if you you can read all the yeah, other yeah, ones. Yeah, here's your, here's your free sample. Now you got to pay yeah, for it. Yeah, exactly. And I, <laughs> I started the first one and I had no idea what like a lit RPG was supposed to be yeah. or like progression fantasy. And I got into a little bit into it and I thought, I think this was just written for a, a, a different audience that's, that does not include me. Like this yeah. is just not not for me. No, I think I said there's a part where like, oh, we, we, we got to break our friend out of prison. He's like, oh, please get me out of here. Like, oh, wait, no, you need to defeat this monster so you can get to the next level. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is not for me. No. Yeah, yeah. And no. I said, I like some RPGs. You know, I've been playing a little. I, like, I love playing Final Fantasy. I don't like reading yeah. about someone grinding yeah, yeah, to get yeah, 99 yeah. XP, though. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been playing Baldur's Gate recently. I, I try to like not play a lot of video games, but Baldur's Gate has just been singing. My yeah. I, I, I'm so. a, I've been about 12 hours now, which is okay, nothing yeah. on the surface there. But, so. but you restarted. Didn't you? I, I, I did the first like hour and then restarted because I didn't like the, the build that I had. And yeah, I realized that you. I looked up, can you go in and change your character, like your class or your parents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're getting they're like, nope. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to start over while I'm only an hour into the game. Okay. So. And you also didn't like Shadowheart as a character? Oh, uh, no. Shadowheart, immediately I said, okay, well, if this is going to be like Dragon Age or Mass Effect, that's that's going to be my that's gonna be my bay right there. So. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because like, I love Shadowheart. I think she's yeah, great. No, definitely. If there's a romance option, my character will pursue that, that, that option with Shadowheart. It's going to No, you, you strike me more as a gift guy. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some weird stuff out there, some memes, so uh, that's all I'll say. Yeah. Not about you. About the okay, not about me. That's good to know. I try to keep track of those memes. <laughs> you know. um, I don't know. What, what do you think is like... Uh, oh, let's go back to actually talk about this for a second. So Sun, with Sun Eater, I feel like the hardest part about telling people about Sun Eater, one, because I'm only in the first book, is just that like, the concept is like really high, like it's a really high concept kind of book, mm -hmm. right? You have to be like, so it's like in space, but there's all this old world mythology and sometimes there's going to be untranslated Latin <laughs> and sometimes there's going to be like weird allusions to the Roman empire. So it really helps if you read a little bit of Roman history. Bro, and <laughs> here's the honest to God's truth is I will text Christopher sometimes and ask him to explain it to me like I'm five because I mean, there'll be some stuff and I'll be like, I'm not going to lie, Chris. I don't think I'm smart enough to understand what's going on right now. And he'll have to explain to me. Like, oh, okay. That makes more sense. And that's not because of him. That's just because he doesn't feel the need to dumb it down for people like me. Yeah, yeah. I think so. It's just because I'm not I'm not as seasoned of a sci-fi reader as, mm -hmm. as a lot of other people are. So I think there's some stuff that, you know, is this actually happening? Is this a fever yeah. dream? Is this speculation? I don't even know what's going on right now. So it's things like that. So there are moments reading... Uh, both Malazan and reading Sun Eater were all just like stop and kind of look up at the wall and be like, Am I too stupid for this? You know, do you feel do you enjoy the sensation of being lost when you're reading? No, of not, not understanding really. what's going I mean, on? I mean, as far as if it's like okay, it's hooks, I want to know the answer to these. That's one thing. If I'm like, I don't understand what I just read for the last 100 pages, that's when I started getting a little frustrated. Okay, because 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 you're a Dune fan, you're a big Dune <laughs> fan, yeah. and one of the things that I love about Frank Herbert is his world building. Where he isn't like, and Paul pulled out this knife and with a certain type of uh, knife, you know, um, name, which by the way is that, you know what yeah. I mean? He doesn't like explain that. He just like, you have to like look in a glossary, right? To try to understand things. So yeah, I that, love that, that, that about that seems like I'm contradicting myself when I, when yeah, I come yeah. like I love do. But here's the thing is I just feel like. I was consuming so much less back then that I could focus yeah. on Dune and say, I'm going to read this and just dissect this until I understand everything. Because, yeah, you know, like first time I see, like, Lisa and Al-Gaib, most people are like, what? What is he talking about? You know, I, yeah, yeah. where I was like, that's not that big a deal. You know, it's just the inner world stuff. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's 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 different, I think, with, with Dune, the original book, than when you get to, like, God Emperor, where it gets, like, super, super navel gazy and yeah, kind of yeah, high yeah. philosophy, where it's like, okay, that's probably not going to be for everybody. And, yeah, I, God Emperor was a struggle for me, but it was also a struggle for me at 18 years old because what the hell am I reading right now? You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. if, you, if you read that far, you know where that series goes. And it's just like, how did we get from that to this in four books? You know, yeah. So, what are the, what are the, I think I read the first four of Dune, but it's been years. It's been years. I count the first book as one of my favorite science fiction books, but I, I, I feel less into the other books, but I, I think they're good. Uh, they're just like not nearly as good as the first book for me. Though the first one is a really, really badass album. 
and you know, yeah, your yeah. first album, and then everything after that's always just kind of graded on a curve. Because it's like, ah, it's not as good as this, but you know, it's fine. It, it, exactly. It's like this is a very reasonable and interesting follow up. I get yeah. it. I see why you'd want to make this. I will reread Dune many times in my life. I don't know how often I'll then continue the series. So, um, but you know, maybe I will. Who, who knows? You might have hit Dune though at that time in your life because I think you read it when you were like a teenager, where you could like pick up a try. book. You could pick up a try. book and say, this is going to be my entire personality for a while. <laughs> like, I, like, yeah, I was very, you know, you're, I was 15. I didn't know anybody. You know, we had just moved to Houston. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anybody. Low confidence level. I was the same age as Paul, going through the, all them serious life changes like he does. I just, I just related to it on a level that, it just, I don't know. Just I, I tell people all the time, but Dune is like, I, I expect people not to like it because people all the time are like, oh, sorry, I didn't like it. I mean, I expect you not to like it. It's just, it's with those people that it clicks with, man. It really, really clicks with. So, yeah, I don't get mad that almost every booktuber out there is like, I don't really get it. Three out of five, you know, something like that. I, I That's fine. I get it. It's not yeah. going to be the same experience for everybody. Yeah. But, man, those people that it clicks with, it really clicks with. Now, what are you going to do? in like next month when you hit a hundred thousand subscribers and you're able to quit your job because you're going to be a millionaire from YouTube. Yeah, right. And... Oh man. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Uh, I, you know, actually for like a hundred thousand, I was thinking about, and I don't know, if, I don't know if you're the same age as me or not, but I, I made this joke to Philip cause he would understand what I was talking about. Yeah. As I said, I was thinking about doing like a old Jerry Lee, Jerry Lewis telethon thing and like yeah, just going yeah, like yeah. 24 hours on a, a live stream. Yeah. yeah. And, but I, I don't think I would go 24 hours. My kids wouldn't really focus on it. And just like inviting a bunch of other, you know, booktubers that want to jump on. They can kind of. Oh, that'd thing. be, that'd be, that'd be cool. I'm, I'm, cool. I'm, I'm 33. So I'm a little bit younger than yeah, you. Yeah. You're, 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 you're just a, a young little lad still. You got I think I'm still, I think I'm still older than the average booktuber. <laughs> You know. True, true. Like I look yeah. at my demographics and it's like I'm getting almost nothing in 18 to 24. Yeah, <laughs> but everything yeah, like yeah. 24 to 35 is like my like 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 my, my Oh, friend. I think it, that's that's yeah, that makes sense. My my actual biggest group is um the 18 to 24s. By they're probably like 40 or 40 or 50 percent of my audience, I think. Really? Wow. Um and like I I don't know, what's your what's the breakdown for men and women on your channel? Just out of curiosity. The the does, does it yeah, it gives you it gives you like percentages right uh, I think like ninety percent of my audience is male yeah I th I think when I first started I was like ninety percent male now I'm like eighty five or like eighty or something like I haven't that, checked it yeah. in a while but it yeah. was just like yeah a, a, a while it's, it's been like okay. that for a while are you not like an obsessive YouTube analytics guy oh no I am to the point okay. to where I get uh, I get criticized for talking about it too much in videos yeah. sometimes and I'm like it's just you're working finance guys, you're working in data analysis is just things you can't turn off just because I enjoy doing yeah. this as well. You know, you're, 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 you work in finance, you're, you're a marketing minor. It's hard for you not to look at these kind of things be yeah. like, what's working, what's not, you know, I, that's what's helping I, grow at a, a decent pace. Yeah. I, I admit, I don't talk about this in like my videos. I don't do like weekly updates like you or monthly updates where I talk about stuff like that. So it's a slightly different approach there, but I, I look at my analytics too often probably like i look at them all the time because if you for anyone who doesn't have a youtube channel when you get access to youtube studio and you start building an audience youtube will give you so much data i mean mm -hmm. it's google like they they have they know everything about you i can look up what kind of queries or like searches my audience likes to make mm -hmm. you know so you can see what topics they're looking for um like youtube wants to give their creators just tons and tons of data um so remember, it's a, it's Google, so nothing's private. <laughs> like nothing's actually private. <laughs> and so, you know, I spend I spend a fair amount of time looking at that. And I and sometimes like some months, you know, suddenly my gender breakdown will go 50-50 for a little while or something. And I'm always really curious about that. Like, what did I do differently that made uh, more women want to watch me or fewer men or something like that? It's always it's always an interesting question to ask yourself. As you know, well. I even talked about Lee Bardugo books and I didn't raise my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for me it's when i talk about journaling because i put out videos about journaling uh, sometimes yeah. and uh the gender breakdown is much more evenly split uh, i don't think i've ever had a video that's been majority women but it's it'll be uh kind of split down the middle for journaling stuff mm -hmm. yeah see I, i've thought about doing your method just saying just putting out one really awesome video per week 
and getting more views and you know putting less time <laughs> but uh you know hey we we all have our own styles i think i, I have well, more ideas and time is what i yeah. say how much how much well, oh yeah you should see my, i have a, a list of all the videos i want to make yeah. i think i have probably have like 25 in the hopper or something like that oh, yeah. um yeah. I, so i could finish i could finish out the year probably but i mean this is an interesting question because like you put out what three videos a week uh Usually four on average. Okay, which is great. I love them because I watch every single one of your videos. I want to be very clear about this. I watch them all. I think uh, I get a, I get a ping on your Discord and I'll often watch it or I'll like listen to it or something like that. Right. Um, but I uh, I can't do it. You know, for some reason I just like can't get that many out. Um, but I think like how many hours per week do you think you work on your channel? Well, I usually will record everything in one day. You know, I'll just record oh, them all okay. back to back and then just kind of edit them and, and just kind of release them slowly over the week. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, man, I think the, what takes the longest is editing them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, I mean, try to try to dance around this one here. Uh, today, you can go viral and be destroyed off saying yeah. one thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you basically, if I record something, because I don't do a ton of cuts, I, I still have to go back and listen to the entire yeah, thing yeah. and say, is that going to piss someone off? You know, yeah, I, yeah. I, right I there. understand so that. So yeah. that's just that's just being the honest truth there. I don't I've worked too hard on this to get destroyed because I said something stupid one time. Yeah, I didn't take yeah. it, out, you know, and I don't yeah. think I ever do say anything. But I also am like, don't, don't think know, about it that way. Think yeah. about are you going to piss someone else off? So yeah. that probably takes the longest is because my videos average about 20 minutes so yeah. i've got to at least listen to 20 minutes while i go through and, and and doing editing to it but thankfully since i don't do a bunch of cuts i don't usually have that much that much to do so i would say 25 minutes to record it in an hour so about an hour and a half on each video so so we're looking at about 10 six, hours six right? to six, to, oh, six, six to eight hours six to eight hours six a week eight. Yeah. okay okay Mike, you because and I, I don't do a lot different. of planning. Yeah, I really don't. Yeah, I don't really do a lot yeah. of planning. I know my format. And I say I'm just going to do that. Yeah, I see. That helps a lot. We spend very different amounts of time on YouTube uh, 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 doing stuff. I think that these days I'm spending close to 30 hours a week running my channel. Holy moly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so so I think this is um, – and I have another – I'm on paternity leave right now, so I, I, I'm not working right now. But um, that will end eventually. <laughs> and I'll, I, well, when I, I started I, you know, this, I was, I was you know – stay at home dad because I was doing, mm -hmm. I went back to business school and mm -hmm. I was doing all that online. And so wife went back to work. So I, I really just kind of started doing this because I said, I need some adults to talk to, <laughs> you know, yeah, just talking yeah, to, yeah. Uh, because my kids at the time were so young. Uh, but uh, it, it's, I thought that when I went back to work, it would slow down, but for whatever reason I hadn't. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I th my hope is that when I go back to my job, um, I'll be so used to doing this much on the channel that I'll maybe streamline it a little bit, mm. you know, um, so that I can continue this pace. Well, anyway, um, like I said, I just Saturday, usually uh, so that'll be my recording yeah. day. I'll just record everything that day, except my, my, my weekly video. Cause that's just really as a, oh. a vlog of what I'm doing right now. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I'll always do that so, on Thursday, Thursday or Friday. Yeah. So I think the difference also is, um, you record a 20 minute video. So maybe you record for 25 minutes or something like that and cut out five minutes or something, you know, let's say well, never that much, um, but you know, it takes me at least oh. that long to set everything up. <laughs> oh, okay. I release videos that are like eight minutes long and I usually am cutting down at least an hour of footage. No kidding. Wow. I, I do retakes and stuff of so much stuff. Maybe mm -hmm. this is, this is breaking the mystique. I shouldn't be admitting this stuff. Live. No, no, I yeah, love hearing I, I, <laughs> process. I, See, yeah, people I, tell I, me I that they're, they're, so they're amazed that I can talk that long and not have a bunch of us and dead space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff. Wow. The, the thing is, I, I don't script my videos, but I outline them in advance. And so what it is like, I know that I'm going to say like these three things in the, in this section of the video, but I do it a bunch of times to make sure I say it the right, to say it the right. I'll way. usually scribble some bullet points just so I don't forget yeah. to talk about something. Cause I will, I, I'll be editing it and realize I forgot. I'm like, oh, I gotta settle that all that back up yeah. to say one line. Yeah. So that's when I say, I just, that's I'm going to use bullet points, but never going to like type out what I'm going to say. Cause you'll just keep looking at your notes the whole the, time. The absolute worst thing that can happen. And I've done this before is like, you realize there was something you needed to say. So, and you realize it a day later. And so I got to go find that t-shirt. You know, it helps that a lot of times I just wear black t-shirts, but like, you know, you got to go find another black t-shirt. You got to, oh, I, I, sometimes display. I just give up. And that's why I like, like this week, yeah, like yeah. my thumbnails, they all have me wearing the same shirt. Cause I was like, I don't yeah. even care. Anymore. <laughs> I'm not going downstairs and changing shirts back into what I was wearing when I recorded that video. What, one trick is to wear a white t-shirt and then in Photoshop, you can change the color of your t-shirt. 
Mm. So no, you could like it'll be like this is this is Mike's pink shirt day. This is Mike's green shirt day. No, see, that's another <laughs> this thing. Is still... I, don't, I don't even know how to use Photoshop. Oh, so... okay, yeah, yeah. That, that, okay, <laughs> I use yeah, that would be a skill you. Thumbnails, yeah, yeah, that would be something you have to learn, I guess. Don't ever pick a red shirt because that's the day you die, because um, <laughs> because because you get sent out uh, too soon. But you know, aside from that, you'd be you'd be great. Someone else said, or we could do what Daniel Green does. And recording your pajamas as an afterthought. Yeah, Daniel I, like cuts cuts stuff in, right? And yeah, maybe, I think maybe Daniel's I just persona like is he can just be completely zany and wacky, and his people love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like if I did it, people be like, "Oh, this guy's lost his shit." So <laughs> it's a little weirder. It's a little weirder when an older guy does it. Yeah, I think uh, so. Um, and that's why people are like hey, Mike. You need to have a bigger influence on TikTok. I'm like, have you been to TikTok? I don't think I'm the. That's that. That's not my audience, man. Because I don't. I don't dance. I don't do yeah, yeah. goofy skits. I don't do crazy editing and stuff. So I was like, it's, just, it's just not for me. I think it's great that people have built a brand off doing that. Mine's and I, I and that. I think like my videos are less conversational than yours. You have a very conversational tone. You said it yourself. Like you're trying to sound like a buddy at a yeah. coffee shop. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I feel like when you're talking, I could be like, we could be at a bar drinking, a, you know, having a beer or something like this. You do keto, so I, I guess you'd be drinking water but uh you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know um and you would um you know i feel like we could pick up the conversation right and um someone else told me that my videos felt like i was back trying to be a professor again mm. like that i was trying to just like lecture at people Teaching. which might be right yeah so uh and maybe if you're if your professor comes in and is in pajamas because he runs back in, he's in his pajamas and says, I forgot to mention, by the way, <laughs> like you need to read this. Book. I think I did that one time. It was, God, it was a while back. I was like yeah. back before the Witcher came out and I was in, I had not planned to record the video and I was still in my robe because it was cold out. And I just said, screw it. Let's just record yeah. it for one. Yeah. That was the only time I ever did that. Otherwise it's been always just, you know, what I dress like. I could maybe tr work on twisting my format a little bit to see if I could get away with this. It would at least save me some time. No, I mean, hey, I, we all have our own little brand things. Like my, mine apparently is, you know, taking a sip of my coffee, you know, and, oh, yeah, yeah. and, and wearing rock t-shirts and stuff. That's just, yeah. that's just a thing that, you know, you never really plan to happen, but you know, yeah. hey, that's what people love. They embrace someone, it. someone told me in a comment recently that they've noticed that in most of my videos, when I want to emphasize a point, I close my eyes while I talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll like I'll close my eyes for the last part, like yeah, I'm concentrating really hard. It, yeah. mm -hmm. And I, I just decided to kind of lean into it. If I do that, I do that, right? Like, um, there's like only so much polish you can put on a YouTube channel before it gets clinical, right? It can feel. You still want to feel like a person, right? You feel. Yeah, that's you, why, you that's why I said I don't want to do all the all the camera cuts and stuff because it, it, it's at some point it seems like I don't know. Like you're some kind of weird mashup video or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, but and, I know and not everybody can talk that. No, nobody can ramble like I can about yeah, absolutely yeah. nothing. And it's minutes. one reason that people watch YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. It's like they watch it because they can feel that personal connection. Mm -hmm. And it's one pe reason that people are drawn to, to booktube. So, you know, you're like one of the few booktubers I talk to more often because we talk on your Discord sometimes. But like, you know, I'm getting to know like Philip because he and I are going to talk. Uh, Joanna's in here. I'd love to talk to her sometime. You know, just like booktubers there. And if you don't have that conversational style at all, then it's like weird, right? Like, you know, then then you wouldn't be forming these kind of community bonds, mm -hmm. right? And you right. and you wouldn't be making friends. Because here's one thing that I think people don't think about when they start a YouTube channel. If you do it right, you will make friends. Mm -hmm. Like you'll make, and look, they'll be good friends. Like you'll make friends that you talk to about interests that maybe no one in your actual life wants to talk to you about. You know? Oh uh, yeah, I got um, friends that I've made off this and we're sending like, you know, baby shower presents and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it, it, we've become all really good friends. And, I know it's a, a when you're younger, you think, oh, well, you know, y'all got my real life friends and I got my online friends. And I'm like, I don't even look at it like that. These, these are friends. I mean, we'll probably never meet, you know, but it's yeah, it yeah, doesn't, yeah. with the way the Internet is now, you don't have to meet, you know, yeah. we can make well, video if, calls and stuff. You know, it's not a big deal like it yeah. used to be. Well, if Pierce ever decides to come back to um, book people in Austin, hmm. I'll meet you there and we'll get some coffee or something like that. He, he said so. he's going to for Red God. So okay. I, hope he, I hope he wasn't just, you know, bullshit. But no. yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> he's getting so much bigger. Who knows? Who knows? He might not get a say in these things anymore. We get still, Austin, at least, you know, at that bookstore, gets a fair number of like big authors. That's to an come. awesome place. It's the only time it's I've a, been there for his yeah. signing. Yeah, I love it. I, it's, my, it's my favorite book. I wear the hat in my a lot of my live streams and stuff. It's my favorite hat too. Good place. Uh, it's, it's a good place. Um, no, I think with online friends, the, some of the guys I talk to on a daily basis, like in a group chat, are guys I met online like 10 years ago. 
-hmm. And we've just like, like a couple of us have just been friends ever since. And I've met like one of them in person. Right. And, but who cares? Like they're just like, they're the dudes I talk to. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to ask you for just one more thing before we wrap up. Cause sure. eventually I got to go help a baby go to sleep uh, or mostly save my wife. But I'm just curious based on the books that you know, that I like, can you think of a fantasy series that I should be reading? Or is it Sun? Is is Sun Eater just just? No, I think Sun Eater sounds perfect. For <laughs> too. So I think you, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe just Robin Hobb. I think it's, she's <laughs> similar in that her prose is just like gorgeous. I'm not a pro snob, but even I can notice when something's like, wow, that that was a beautiful string of words. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think I think that for sure. Especially if you're like me and you have that emphasis on character, uh, I, I think you'll you, you'll really really like what she does because. Her series will get dragged by some people because uh, it's slow. It's mm -hmm. slow books, but it's it's just not that kind of series. It's it's very slow burn. It's about it's a character study kind of series. Uh, okay, it really okay. is. But there are enough interesting events going on in the world that you'll be interested in reading fifteen books. In okay, series. interesting. Yeah, so I would probably I would probably rank the like different parts of books. For me, the most important thing is concept. I like whatever the idea is. It's got to mm -hmm. like hook me. So that's why Rockio makes a lot of sense. Stevenson makes a lot of sense. Uh, Wolf and things like this. Second, though, probably is um, prose. Prose is like the second most important thing. Then maybe character and yeah. plot is like the least important thing for me. I, yeah, I can I mean, read a book with a boring plot. For you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I've heard occasionally that some of Robin Hobb's books are a little boring. A little what? A little boring. Ah, like the, the, yeah. That the plot can drag. There could be some times where I'm like, look, I, I don't read Robin Hobb for the, the the thrills and the adventure and stuff like that. I'm there just kind of for that world. But there are some times where I'm like, but I didn't need 500 pages for you to tell me pretty much nothing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Are we still are we still on this boat? Yeah, yeah. The old, yeah. Woo, man, the one I know you hate. Now. I know you hate boats. I don't oh, quite understand. Man. It, it's like that Moby Dick PTSD. It's I think it just ruined it just ruined seafaring stuff yeah. for me forever. But Wait, I so you also her, don't right? like you, you also don't like Moby Dick, right? I cannot stand Moby Dick. <laughs> so Mike, that's another book that it could be one of the great that's like top five great American novels. And I, yeah, I, I did is... put that one in unpopular opinion, no doubt. I uh, don't like yeah. F. Scott Fitzgerald. You know, it's it's there are some very, very popular books. I'm like, yeah, didn't work for me. But then there are those some of those you should call them kind of bandwagon ones that everybody loves. And yeah, yeah I love yeah. them too, you know. So classics so are Brian really put that. Brian puts this out. Yeah. Big ideas are trickier to find in fantasy than in sci-fi. I think that's right. And that's why, that's right. you know, Michael Crichton isn't exactly like the most character writing kind of guy. You know, he doesn't really have, I can't even think besides Jurassic Park about some characters. I'm like, Oh yeah, those are great characters. And I think that's more because of the movie than it is his books, yeah, but yeah. he always had the best idea. And if you can hook me with yeah. that idea first, man, Crichton was one of the best ever to do it. Cause his idea yeah. was always amazing. To where I didn't even care about the character. I just want to know more about this idea that you're talking about. And I think it's something Blake Crouch is doing really well too in that Crichton play. Yeah, this is um, Adrian Tchaikovsky in the sci-fi world does that really well. Big ideas, really cool ideas. For the first time this year. Yeah. Is it going to be Children of Time or is it going to be something it, it else? It is going to be Children of Time. That was a viewer okay, choice. I, I put out okay, the, the and that was a viewer choice for me to read Children of Time. I think you'll I think you'll dig it, but um, I like I like that. I haven't read the other two. I got to get to them. Ursula K. Le Guin is one of my favorite writers. Just full stop. I not not even for all of Earthsea and have never read them. I don't have an excuse for it. I just haven't. Earthsea is probably her let her least um her least idea driven books, um but the, it's probably the most character driven. So you would you would probably enjoy. It. But like the Dispossessed is one of my favorite books ever. Um, number three, I believe, on my list uh, when I made my top ten mm -hmm. uh, ten uh, list of books. Oh yeah, someone um, recommend Ted Williams. Ted Williams is another one that would be really great for you, I think. Okay, I've never read Ted Williams, so I should, uh, yeah, I should do this. I've never heard of Jenny Wirtz. I don't, I don't know this, but I'm gonna write these. I, I'm gonna write these I down. had not heard of her until about a year ago, and now I can't stop hearing about her. Uh, okay, her and Ray, her and Raymond. I'd heard of Raymond Feist, but I had never heard of Jenny Wirtz. Okay. She follows me on Twitter, so she's very, very nice. Oh, okay, well, that's good. I haven't read um, any books. I know, I know that the uh, it, maybe it's Alan. I know Joanna's reading some. Okay. Ah. I, I also have been recommended Ada Palmer for science fiction. No. Um, and it's, people tell me that if I like, philo like since my background's in philosophy and I like, you know, had a couple of videos about philosophical science fiction, 
That's um, the thing. You start with, messing with these fantasy tubers, man. They'll they'll get your list growing yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta watch out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, China Melville. I should say I, I like China. I read one. I read a book uh, for by him for the first time this year. I read The City in the City, and I thought that was he great. Recently had it recommended to me, but I haven't. I haven't That's seen. cool. It's cool because it's like a police procedural, and it's like a fantasy science fiction kind of story. And so if you and the characters are, are at least decent. So like if you get a little bored with the concept, like you can still worry about like the who done it, who who committed the murder and stuff. Um, in a way that actually feels like a mystery at times, unlike say Dresden Files, where there's not never much of a mystery. You kind of, I, I, I don't know, nothing ever feels like a big reveal in a Dresden's file book when I when I've read yeah, them. No, it's just I, I think I think this, there, right? that, yeah, I think like, I think those books are fine. They're fun, right? They're fun, and I don't, um, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't dismiss fun reading. I love fun reading, like as much as I want to talk about. See, that's why I don't understand why the, Dresden, why the Dresden fandom is so high strung sometimes at me. It's like, dude, why are you guys like breaking this down like it's Art of War, man? These are fun ass books. There's a lot of people have fun yeah, yeah, yeah. with them. Also, he. The, you're you have a wizard who takes juice packs and makes potions in them like <laughs> we've, we we have we have left the realm of seriousness right but it's fun it's it's just it's oh, just you've read these baker books every everyone seems to be reading the darkness that comes before i have not no i haven't prince of nothing i yeah, yeah. besides book of the new sun that's probably the biggest like dense yeah. series i get recommended a ton i'm like i am finishing malazan first yeah. then i'll dip into another super heavy series and i think it needs to be book of the new sun just because yeah yeah someone bought me a nice 200 hundred dollar version of it i should probably read it yeah yeah um that's one where you should read it on your kindle then and then just keep that edition yeah looking yeah really you might get fingerprints yeah. on it yeah <laughs> i love piranesi brian i love piranesi by Susanna clark i also like jonathan strange a lot but piranesi was great um it was a Those beautiful have beautiful a book. very very polarizing opinions about that book as well that one i think really is there's great characters there, but the prose is the selling point. Like that, like there is like, I was just like overwhelmed by its beauty. Um, but you know, that's just like, that's just like really, really important to me sure. when, when I'm reading books and you know, we're all going to come back with a sort of different weighted set of values. When we're well, people at look at I find... things that I don't like nice prose. I'm saying what I am. I'm not a pro snob. I won't read something that's average writing. Like, oh, what a terrible sentence. I, yeah. I yeah. Yeah. That. You know, but and I, I mean, and, and I can, wow, that's I, beautiful. Yeah. I can, I can even enjoy stuff that I don't think is super well written. It's one of the reasons I, I can read, I can read Sanderson, right? Um, you know, one of the problems I have, if I talk to you, if I talk to people in your discord, because like I talk about science fiction, sometimes I talk about fantasy, sometimes I talk about philosophy. I talk about classics, you know, originally my channel was only going to be about the classics and I just like pivoted. I just kind of decided to not limit. You realize myself, no right? one wanted to hear about Moby Dick. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But people like the classic <laughs> stuff, man. But, you know, but they, um, I just decided I was going to, I decided I was going to turn it into just I'll talk about whatever I want. And it, that seemed to have worked out for me well enough. But mm -hmm. um, it means that if I talk to a fantasy booktuber, you're going to know so many series that I've never even heard of. Sure. If I talk to a science fiction, if I talk to like Moid or something, or like Fit to be Red Knight, like will like message me, I'll be like, hey, can you think of a book that fits this description? And he'll be like, I just thought of 20. Let me, you know, and like he'll want to send it to me. Or if I talk to you know someone else, I just get because I'm kind of dabbling in a lot of these a lot of these genres. Like the real enthusiasts like can teach me so much, which is great. Yeah, I love not like, having to do. You're the doing work. a pie chart. I'm like 75 percent fantasy, 20 percent sci-fi, and five percent horror. You know, that's yeah, just kind yeah. of where I am. If you're not counting Stephen King, so yeah, you you mingle with those those other kind of levels of booktube. This is the dark tower here. You got different levels of book tube. You're gonna you're gonna see your list grow really quick, and you're yeah. also gonna be like, yeah, I've never heard of that. So I'm gonna have to rewatch this to go through the chat to just like write down all these all, all all of these books. And it's as if you know, my wife, you know, we share a Kindle library. Like I don't know if you you can share it with your household. We used to, except my yeah. wife reads a lot of smut, and I was like, I don't, oh, okay, okay. I don't want all this shit. <laughs> so um, you can you can change it per book, by the way. But but uh, we do this. And my wife will often be like, you have so many fantasy and science fiction series to read. Why are you looking for new books? I'm like, 
Okay. Yeah. I have so much to read and I did not even, I just picked this up like a week ago and now I've already just said, I've got to start it because I just happened about it. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just got to go where your heart takes you, man. Sometimes like that's why I had to go to sun eater and it was the right choice. And now I'm trying to be more impulsive because I am again, you work, you're a planner, you're a planner, you work in forecasting. You want to plan everything. Yeah. Yeah. I said, look, I got these two long series, the expanse and really the links to wrap up. And like next year, my goal, I just gonna stop all this damn reread nonsense. Yeah, yeah. I'm never yeah, gonna be able to read all this yeah, stuff before yeah. I go. So yeah. I just want to focus on just hey, I feel like reading that. I'm gonna do it, Damon. Yeah, but absolutely. I still plan ahead. Absolutely. I think I think that's good to have. At least some portion of your reading should be just like spur of the moment stuff, just mm-hmm. to keep the magic alive, right? Just I like think so. Just, yeah. And also not ever feeling like you're a slave to the schedule. Like, oh, I want to read that right now, but I can't because I already planned this. But I also am afraid of chaos. And so yeah, yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. So this is why I don't announce anything about what I'm reading in advance to my audience. That well, never A lot comes of people out. wanted me to do my TBR monthly. I used to do it quarterly. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad they wanted to do that because it keeps yeah. me from locking myself into something that I would be like, oh, no. I yeah, said yeah, I was yeah. going to do this over three months, and I did not like book one. And yeah. I'm going to. I feel like I'm just going back on my word. So I'm glad the, that they, they asked me to do that. The furthest ahead I've planned is that I'm going to do the Brothers Karamazov read along in my Discord in September. That's it. That's in. That's in a week. That's how big is your Discord? If you don't mind me, how many? Um, we have about a thousand people, mm-hmm. um, and I, I I don't push it a ton, and I started it pretty late, but I got about a thousand people in there. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's not nearly as active as yours. But, well, I get so many people that will leave mine. I'll be like, did someone piss you off? Like, nah, it's just, it's just too much going on. There's a <laughs> lot going on, man. It's a little overwhelming. I get yeah. it. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I'm just curious because uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised that mine I is as big as it is. Honestly. The people who join mine mostly want to talk about philosophy stuff. There's mm-hmm. a few of them who want to talk about fantasy and science fiction stuff too. But the people who would like come and like for more stuff from me are the ones who want to talk about philosophy. That's just yeah. like what, what I've learned. And I guess that, that's like my unique selling point, right? It's like, I'm a booktuber, but I have a PhD in philosophy. So it's like, that's... well, when you get further into Sun Eater, I recommend you message Christopher because he will come on tour and he will philosophize your ass off. I want to, so. I want, I want to have this happen. If I can't get in touch with him, I'm going to use you as my, my intermediary. Yeah, no, I, I, like he, well, he's just had a baby. So he's focusing on that and writing. Cause you know, it's, he, he can't do, but like he even like left the discord for a while and he was just like, I, I just, I don't need to distract you while I'm writing because the baby. I just had a baby, so he he and I can he and I can bond over being. But yeah, uh, you you get further in the series, let me know. Let me know. I'll get you in touch. Okay, that'd be great because I'd love to meet him. Because again, I think if you want proof that there is real injustice in the world, it's that Chris Rocchio is not a household name in fantasy and science fiction. I agree. I I mean, even if it was just amongst fantasy and science fiction heads, because he's so good. He is so good. I feel like it's growing. It's growing more and more. Yeah, Yeah. we're gonna we're you know you can count me. I am now part of this giant snowball of fans and we're going to keep rolling over people and eventually we'll turn into an avalanche to push chris rocky there i mean the fact that he even had trouble with publishers i don't know the full story there i don't want to speculate oh, it's but like the fact that this guy's writing genuinely amazing books and then still had to go around shopping for and the thing to was, to a like, smaller... it, it, unlike a lot of these series like each one sells less his each one was selling more and they yeah, still cool. the thing was was they when they got acquired uh, they told him that hey, even though he had it in writing from the original publisher that he could write seven books in the series, they came in, they wanted to end it in book five. He's like, I, I can't, you, you know, yeah, I you can't get my story. Man, man. So I said, yeah. okay, we'll give you six. You need to end it in six. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to deliver like a 2,500 page manuscript. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's when they, they, they basically let him search for other people. He went back to Bain and they're going to let him finish the series the way that Which he is great. It, it's great. It's great it to see that. It blows my mind. How are you going to let someone? Who's it's trending up? It's trending and, up, and they won't even cover. reprint. They won't even reprint the hardbacks. You won't. And the thing was, like, he had to get permission to do that Kickstarter yeah, for his it's, first book. You know, wild. so it's, yeah. I mean, I it's think just like I, I know that Bane will take care of him. It's just you know, a lot of people still kind of look at Bane as like you know, I don't know. You go just look at sci-fi in a different way. Yeah. I think like it's this is schlock. It doesn't. It's not. It's not yeah, literature yeah. or something. And I, I just I, I don't understand why someone like Orbit hasn't snapped him up because I think yeah 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 the fast he writes and the quality he writes Tor or Orbit should have yeah been like that right but I don't know you know I think I heard about his Kickstarter from you and I didn't bother to look into it because I have a really negative experience with some Kickstarters not with books but with other stuff I got burned on some Kickstarters and so I just don't do them anymore um, yeah, and, I mean, that's me with PayPal I get it. and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I fell in love with Sun Eater and I'm like. Damn it! I should have been on that Kickstarter, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I got rid of a ton of my books recently, but I would make room on my shelves to have 
Sun Eater in hardback. Yeah, like that yeah, I got to do a, a pick a, a commission for some art in that Kickstarter. That's, that's sweet. And, that's and, sweet. And, and they liked it so much. We're using it on the uh, the end pages now because they that's liked awesome. They picked that, somebody, so. That's awesome. You're making history, man, with this like one of the best series that's going right now. Yeah, I, no. and I've heard that the first book is the weakest, even though it's really. Good. That's what some say. It's still my favorite. I bet I'm oh, okay. I am. I routinely am. I love beginnings. Okay, I love yeah. like, Fellowship of the Ring. You know, I love yeah. character introductions. You know, it does feel. Character. It does feel a lot like though, like the wheels are spinning, the engine's getting ready to, to go, and then eventually that series is just going to. Oh take yeah, it, it goes. Yeah. It goes out there, man. Yeah, it goes yeah, out so. there, but routinely most people like book three the best that i, okay. that I found so i'll be interested in following your journey on that but yeah totally yeah i hope you burn right. through it i yeah i hopefully soon i think my reading pace is going to pick back up now that the baby sleeps a little more regularly i was 34 when i had my first so i know i know where you're at my oh, yeah. reading slowed down a lot when it first happened yeah. a lot yeah. so I guess well speaking of babies i am going to go put one to bed i'm going to go do story time and all of this stuff but uh this was great thank you mike for joining me this was such a blast Hey, man, thanks for asking. I appreciate it. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Have a good night.